Hello, hello, everybody. We are continuing. One second. Oh, I forgot a thing. You forget the process, and life goes bleh. But anyway, thank you very much for everybody coming on on. We are going to be playing more Ace Attorney. This time, we are continuing the second case of Trials and Tribulations. We spent a lot of time mostly just adventuring around and gathering evidence last time, so we're going to begin with the first uh, real trial segment after the tutorial, so that'll be interesting to see. A, a quick recap of what happened is this guy, Mask Damask, stole the family urn of the Fey family, the Ami spiritual spirit urn thing. It was being held at the Lordly Taylor, which I've been informed is a play on, like, Lord Taylor kind of place. I don't know what it is. I am uncultured. But yeah, he's apparently stole the urn. This guy got knocked out by Damask, apparently. And, well, not apparently, because we broke a Cycloc and he admitted it. Which means that it did happen. Which means that he's not Damask. Aha! Only putting that together now. Then again, maybe the way he worded it could mean that somebody else knocked him out. So, maybe somebody knocked out Mask to Mask and shattered the urn or something while he was carrying it. That would explain why the box is there, but then why would they spend the time to gather up all the shards? I don't know. But then this guy, Ron Delight, uh, turned himself in, claiming to be Mask to Mask. But his wife, Desiree claims that he's just delusional and just, like, obsessed with Mask to Mask and now thinks that he is or something. And and Larry is back. He wasn't in the last game, but he's returned for the finale, apparently. And the things that we have that are very important is the camera data, which proved that somebody who dressed up as Mask to Mask stole the urn at roughly 1 a.m. the This was used to knock out Luke at me when he went to check the cameras. This is the security photo. There was apparently somebody blackmailing somebody in the Delight family, either Desiree or Ron, for a lot of money, $50,000, to then give that money at 1 a.m., at the place where Ron apparently works, KB Security. So, either somebody had Ron's wallet, or Ron himself went there at 1 a.m., and for some reason, he, like, I don't know. We'll have to discover that, because if he did go and pay the ransom, why would he then turn himself in as Damask? We'll have to figure that out. This is a wibbly-wobbly case right now. Hey, Nick! What is it? Is something wrong? Nah, but did you see all the people here? It's crazy! Oh, so check out the Mask Damask Glossy I bought. People are selling merch? You bought this? Where? from the little tents in front of the courthouse. They have all sorts of things for sale. You know I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff. <laughs> this is gonna be a clue, or at least... Come on, I'm guilty, throw the book at me! Who's screaming like that? Oh, Mr. Wright, you made it. Yeah, I did, but it doesn't look like things are going to get any less ugly for you. Because I did it! I am the criminal! Me! Me! <laughs> Me! Ah, uh, he's at it again. I sent the collie card to Lordly Taylor! I admit it! But you don't have the sacred urn, right? Well, that's true, but 
But that doesn't mean that I didn't commit the crime. Normally when I say of course you didn't, I'm being sarcastic. But you... Yikes. Anyway, I admit that I'm guilty. So make sure they give me a guilty verdict. Please? Huh. This almost makes me think that he's being blackmailed. Could it be that Mask Damask is blackmailing Ron and could it be that maybe Mask Damask is threatening Desiree somehow? But that wouldn't hmm. But that wouldn't make sense because Mask Damask stole the urn at 1258 in the morning. Night? Well, basically just before 1 a.m. Meanwhile, Ron supposedly, assumedly, then again, it, this is making us assume that it was Ron. It's entirely possible that Desiree is the one being, uh, is the one being blackmailed. And then she just used Ron's, uh, employment at KB to, like, go there for some reason. Who knows? But, yeah, I feel like either he is delusional or he's being forced into this. Oh, there you are, Ronnie. Bonjour, sweetie. Oh, D Desi, honey. Bonjour! Well, actually, I don't really know why I should be speaking French to you at a time like this. Leave it all to me, Ronnie. I swear I'll protect you. Um, uh, uh, well, uh, you see, actually, the thief is, uh, me. Can I tell you something, Nicky boy? I can guarantee that my Ronnie is innocent. If he's declared guilty, I'll be ever so cross with you. So why are you smiling when you say it? It could be that maybe she is mask to mask. Okay. Idea, idea time! Ronnie, uh, no, not Ronnie. Desiree is mask to mask. She loves the thrill of stealing things. Somebody figured out that Desiree was mask to mask. Maybe look at me. Look at me could have potentially discovered that Desiree was mask to mask. And that's why she returned the why Luke at me managed to oh that could that explain it Luke at me could have tracked down Desiree and said I know that you are mask to mask give me the diamond you stole so that I can return it for a prize and then followed up with the fifty thousand dollars thing Ron then potentially went. And, oh, that would explain things. Okay, more ideas, more ideas. Because we only, but at the same time. Hmm. Because, yeah, and that would also explain, uh, I'm just trying to think this through. Okay, basics. Desiree is mask to mask, I think, I believe. Luke at me discovered that she was mask to mask and extorted her. First to be allowed to return what the diamond she stole and he got a reward. And that would also explain why Luke at me would say that he knows how he knew that there was a blackmail letter in the Delight household in their apartment because he was the one who sent it potentially. And when it came to that, that, when it came to the, the blackmail, the $50,000, it was specifically asked to have it be delivered at where Ron worked at 1 a.m. But at the same time, Desiree, assuming that she is mask to mask, stole the urn. But there are, there are a few things that are missing here. Like, unless Luke is somehow using, like, 
certain words or phrases because we broke the psych lock. We broke the psych lock to reveal that he got knocked out by mask to mask using the ceremonial sword. But was that before or after they walked out? No, Edgeworth or Demon on a Phoenix Rice cave, no less. I'm apologizing. I keep forgetting brain is evil. Right now, I'm theory crafting. Right now, I believe that Desiree is mask to mask and Luke at me. Found out that she was mask to mask and is extorting her. That would that would explain why he was able to get the diamond back from the last damask st of the stealing and get a reward for it. What I don't know is why Ron is pretending to, or either is believing himself to be, or is pretending to be mask to mask. Why? Look at me would have like extorted them for fifty thousand dollars, but asked for the money to be delivered to KB security. Don't know why he would then allow Mask to Mask to whack him upside the head with the ceremonial sword. There's a few things missing, but I think I have an idea. <laughs> I'll tell you right now, the girl isn't Damask. Ah, but you could be lying. You could be in on it. You could be working for Look at me. As a kid, I actually thought the pregnancy happened no matter what. Like, the pregnancy was like how periods work. Huh. You thought humanity was single-celled life forms. But yeah, but it would explain things. It would explain things. Then again, maybe we'll run into more characters that will explain things as well. Have you ever noticed when Racing Game has a crossover of their game series, the items themselves are very generic? Well, they kind of have to be to fit in for racing games. That's just how games work. But yeah, that's my current theory. I think it works well, but again, we could run into more characters down the line who would more fit Damask, so who knows. This is only day one so far. Well, if you'll excuse me, I've got some errands to run I need, I need to take care of. You're not going to be here for your husband? I'm counting on you, Nicky boy. Good luck. I'm actually being serious. The girl is at Mask Damask. Ah, but what if you, what if you're trying to <laughs> cover up the surprise? This, this is mostly a joke, but who knows? Let's be honest. I really don't know whether Ron is Mask Damask or not. But there's only one thing I am sure of. He doesn't have the sacred urn right now. Mr. Delight, it's time for you to enter the courtroom. <laughs> While you cook up crazy conspiracy theories. In the first non-murder case of the game, but who knows, maybe a murder's gonna be tacked on later. Mm. Remember to stay hydrated. For the time being, I guess I'll have to trust Desiree. <laughs> it turns out Larry is mask to mask. But then again, he wouldn't extort a woman like that. Court is now in session for the trial of Mr. Ron Delight. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Oh, this is, I forgot, I didn't even notice because I was my, I was brain new prosecutor. This guy. I know him. He's the coffee man. That's all I know about him. I wonder if Ron's last name is Delight is because he pleasures his girlfriend and wife. And that's just like, they're delightful people. But back to this guy. I don't, I don't think I know his name. Maybe I knew it before and I forgot. I don't know. But it's Cyclops. It's Jordi LaForge, the coffee man. If I remember, he's supposed to be like the greatest prosecutor in the in the country right now. Whether or not that's because Edgeworth left the country for now, who knows. But let's see, what you got? What about the prosecution? Are you prepared to... What a stupid question. What did you say? Fine. Let me ask you then, Your Honor. Are you ready? Are you ready to pass judgment? Well, no, I, I'm not. I'll pass judgment after I hear arguments from both sides. Well, if you're not ready yourself, you shouldn't expect others to be. That's a rule to live by. Seems a bit silly, but go on. Um, who are you? I'm Godot, legendary prosecutor. I've never lost a case. Do you know how many legendary prosecutors have come across me and I annihilated them? Edgeworth destroyed him. 
then came along Von Karma. Literally sent him to jail and he's probably dead now. I killed him by... I killed him by convicting him in a case that he wasn't even the defendant of. And then his daughter came along, but it was her first case too. But that was also her first case in, well, Japanifornia. So yeah, come on, come at me, I'll break your record. Can you imagine if it turned out that Ron really was mask to mask? Phoenix is asking him, did you steal the urn? Ron is like, no. Well, he, no, he did say. He did say that he... He did it. Phoenix is like, oh, and the case just ends right there. He, <laughs> but that would be... I'm trying to read that again. That would also be amusing if Mask to Mask didn't steal the urn. Somebody was playing cosplay. But yeah, back to Godot. I've beaten many legendary prosecutors. I'm gonna kick your ass too, coffee man. That's literally the only thing I know about him is that he drinks coffee in these cases. Ah, he's the one that Detective Atme was ta talking about. Yes, your reputation precedes you. What kind of cases have you dealt with so far? Huh. None. <laughs> you tell legendary prosecutor never lost a case, also hasn't dealt with any cases. What did you say? I've never prosecuted a case before. N never? But you said you've never lost before. Exactly. I've never lost. I've never won before either. Since there's seductive music playing, you have to read Godot's lines as seductively as possible. Quite arrogant for a beginner, aren't you? Even the mightiest of Redwoods begins their lives as mere saplings. Yes, but a mask in a court of law. Ah, don't you know anything? No matter the man, we all wear masks. Either on our faces or over our hearts. This guy's the real deal, all right, Nick? Why does it seem like all prosecutors are the real deal? So we finally meet, Mr. Phoenix Trite. Nick, is he a friend of yours? No, I don't have any friends that call me Trite. Just who is this masked man? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. Well then, uh, Prosecutor Gobo. It's not Gobo, it's Godot. Your Honor. In any case, please give your opening statement. Opening statement? Those things are not fit for even dogs to consume. I have only one thing to say before we start to you, Mr. Trite. But what is it? Are you familiar with the saying a chain is only as strong as its weakest link? I wonder how much you can withstand before you and your case break in two. Why is he holding an invisible coffee mug? Did they forget to draw the coffee mug? Or is that just how, does he have just a perpetual holding a coffee mug hand because he's addicted to it? Look at the character bios and see how old Godot is because I don't believe that gray hair belongs to someone who's only 20 years old. It, he's younger than right? No. Well, I guess in this version, they made it question mark, question mark, question mark. Maybe until later. But yeah, it was, just, it was like, no, I would not believe him to be 20. But at the same time, this is Phoenix Wright. It is kind of anime. Then again, he, he has black stubble, so who knows? Maybe, he, maybe it's part of the mask. It's a wig. It is coming from the mask. Hmm, well then, let's hear from the first witness. Ah, Detective Dick Gumshoe. Um, my name is... No one has asked for your name, witness. Uh... The important thing is what you know, and that's all. Start talking. We're listening. Yes, sir. All right, witness. First, let's hear about... What do you know about the thief that stole that urn? <laughs> yes, sir. Also, you better not tick Godot off, otherwise he'll blast you with that visor of his. I can't believe Phoenix Wright is in the same world as the X-Men. <laughs> and that Cyclops decided to become a law attorney. 
then again, this is like his first case ever, so maybe it's a part of the X-Men's plan in something. The Mask Damask is a mutant, and they're trying to track him down. Mask Damask is a master thief that first started his crime spree six months ago. He's so confident that he sends his calling card before he even commits the crime. This is part of why I think that Desiree might be, like, or at least why previously I thought that she might be Master Mask, because she likes the thrill of things. So I feel like that would match her personality, but then again, that could also be part of the thing where they're trying to juke you out. You're like, ah, you thought the thrill seeker who makes it harder for themselves to steal would also be the thrill seeker who runs the police on a bike chase. This was his fifth heist, as in his usual. You sent a card on to Lordly Taylor. His pattern is all to always go after the only... Oh, my brain is just bleh. I never stood why thieves even leave calling cards. It's a part of, like, that trope. I'm not sure that real thieves do that in the real world. At least not the smart ones. It's mostly just a trope probably from some original fiction long ago that nobody thinks of to be like, Ah, oh, this is the progenitor of this trope. Like how the legend of the Epic of Gilgamesh and the Journey to the West both <laughs> literally give way to many tropes that we're now familiar for. But, yeah. His pattern is to always go after only the most precious art pieces. And that's why we're sure it was Mask the Mask, sir. It fits his M.O. to a T. But, here's the thing. We literally have Andrew say that that urn was worthless. So it doesn't fit the M.O. at all. But, but it doesn't. It doesn't fit the M.O. at all! <laughs> you think that because they're thieves, they want to remain hidden. It also depends. Because it could also be like a, what is it? A, uh... Carmen San Diego, where they love the chase? Hmm. So then the actual identity of this mask to mask is Mr. Gado. What are you? Oh, there's the coffee mug. We're in the middle of a trial here, Mr. Gado. Who even slid him the coffee? Blacker than a moonless night. Hotter and more bitter than hell itself. That is coffee. I'm sure you can grant me at least this much, Your Honor. Oh, please, proceed. Also, Judge, you cannot get on Godot's case after letting Von Karma whip people, including yourself, the witnesses, and the opposing counsel. <laughs> he has a coffee maker next to him that just spits out mugs, slides it across the bar. Very well. It's only coffee after all. What? You can't be letting him slide this early in the trial? Proceed with your cross-examination, Mr. Wright. Well, Nick, what are you going to do? As long as they haven't brought up Mr. Delight's identity, all I can do is show that it wasn't Mask Damask who stole the urn. First things first, we save, because... Danger. After the last game, where apparently you were at risk of a 95% penalty, I'm going to be afraid. <laughs> yeah, but Godot isn't hitting anyone with his coffee. <laughs> that's true. If anything, that's what I was kind of saying. It's just like, if you let Von Karma whip people, you have to let him have the coffee. Let's see. Let us press, just so that we can get more information. Have you been involved in the investigation from the beginning? Yep, nobody knows more about the thief than me, pal. It's true! I'm a Savari! Author on thieves! An author? He's written books about thieves? Um, I think he probably meant to say authority. The fact that this guy can slip through even my fingers shows how good he is, pal. It's easy when those fingers happen to be butter fingers. Let's press harder. And who knows what's in his coffee. It could have performance-enhancing substances, for all we know. I don't think that courts really care if, like... <laughs> if, like, the uh, councils decide to take some gamer juice that rapids your neurons or something. So nobody knows more about the thief than you, huh? You got it, pal! Except maybe for the thief's mom, that is. But isn't there someone who knows even more about him than the police? You don't mean 
Detective Zavari, do you? Hmm, who is this person, Zavari? He sounds German. His name is Luke at me, sir. I guess I shouldn't have made up such a silly name for him. What the heck? I guess he's not all that famous after all. Anyway, it's true that he did manage to retrieve the last item the thief stole. Oh, I see. It seems you're not the expert you claim to be. Uh, it looks like the thief is toying with me even now. By the way, there's a cute person in this case. Just look for it. Is it Ron? He's oddly beautiful for a man. Let's see. More information, Gumshoe. Have you seen all of these so-called calling cards? Of course I have! Except... The person in charge of the treasure exhibit never brought their card to the police. So I didn't see this one until after the crime occurred. Not person, picture! Well, there obviously has to be a person in a picture now, don't they? But let me see... Huh. Hmm. If we completely disregard the previous theory just to take new information and exposit on it, this makes me think that maybe, maybe, Detective Luke Atme defrauded Lordly Taylor. Because Andrews brought him in 20 days before the crime. And then 10 days before the crime, they received the calling card. But just now, Gumshoe said that they never received the card from this current case. So it's possible that Detective Luke Atme is the one who stole the urn, maybe. Because maybe he wanted to increase his, like, notoriety, so he faked a calling card, and then, like, maybe when he was brought on, he realized that the exhibit wasn't worth anything. Well, no, because that could be a possible thing in the future, because they might go on with the, oh, well, you see, the urn was very, very expensive, only for us to be like, no, it was actually worthless. I'll give you a hint. It has Maya and M Mia in it. Ah. And I guess technically Pearl. Or at least her physical corporeal vessel. But yeah. Hmm. So yeah, I think Luke Atme is involved in this somehow. Because again, Mask to Mask only steals things of value. But at the same time, maybe they could just say, Oh, this guy isn't actually Mask to Mask. He's just an insane man. And hello there. Luke Atme. And he has a magnifying glass on his eye. I get it. Yep. That's the one pun that I got in this. That I understood. Oh, wait. They just said... My theory just went out the window because he just said... I, my brain is on fire, as you can obviously see. But he just said that he didn't see it until after the crime. That's because Detective Adney stopped Miss Andrews from taking it to the police. Was the calling card that Lordly Taylor received authentic? Well, all the cards have one common identifying feature, but we're not releasing that information to the general public. But you're absolutely certain that this card is real. Gumshoe can't say it out loud, but I bet he's talking about Mask to Mask's emblem. This was his fifth heist, and as usual, he sent a card on to Lordly Taylor. And hello again, dear chat. His fifth heist. And your fifth screw-up, huh? OBJECTION, PAL! That ain't fair! Maybe you could say I screwed up four times, but this last time wasn't my fault. I didn't know about the calling card this time! You of all people shouldn't be chuckling about this, Detective Gumshoe. I just wanted everyone here to- I just want everyone here in the courtroom to know something! If you ever get a calling card from this guy, don't call some stupid private eye! Call your local police right away! Got me? Also, that whole Maya living very far away got thrown out real quick. That is hilarious, because, I mean, literally in the second game, Pearls was able to run f from <laughs> the Fey estate all the way to the courthouse. Wow, it looks like he's really got it in for Detective Atme. His pattern is to always go after them only the most precious art pieces. 
I wonder if we could then present this and be like, well, good thing the sacred urn was worth nothing. Art pieces? Like what, for example? Well, his first target was the famous Tear of Imanon. What's that? Some kind of a specially salty teardrop? N no, sir. It's a blue diamond. A single rare diamond. Next was the crown of Bongora. You know, the thing you put on your head. After that was the left hand of Hades, and then the portrait of Magina. Sir, Detective Atme retrieved the portrait of Magina and returned it to the museum. And the target of his fifth and last robbery was the sacred urn, right? But isn't it difficult for him to dispose of such famous art pieces? Well, we assume he must have some underworld connections. Or he could just be a psychopath holding on to them. Somehow Mr. Delight doesn't look the type. Yeah, he's a little too sunny to be hanging out in the underworld. That's why we're sure it was Mask the Mask. It fits his M.O. to a T. What do you mean when you say, it fits his M.O. to a T? I was thinking of asking the same thing myself. Uh, I wish you would listen a little more closely, sir. First of all, there's the calling card. We're 100% certain it's authentic. Then there's the fact that he seemed to know all about the security system. And finally, his target was an art piece. These are all parts of the thief's modus operandi. And so, since this robbery seems to fit all those conditions... That's right! It seems that Mask Damask is behind it! Nick, it definitely looks like it was Mask Damask who stole the urn! But there's no real evidence either way as to whether Ron Delight is Mask Damask. But, but... Also, the urn hasn't turned up yet, let alone in connection to Mr. Delight himself. So even though we know it was Mask Damask that did it? Maybe for the time being, I should try to show it wasn't Mask Damask that did it. And I know precisely what I think. Because only the most precious art pieces... It has no monetary value. Can I ask you a little something, Detective Gumshoe? Just hearing the little in that question is making me nervous. You said he, that he always goes after the most precious art pieces, right? That's right, pal! But there's one problem. That's not what he did in this case. The supposedly priceless urn doesn't exactly rise to the level of precious art. B what do you mean? Nick, how can you say such a terrible thing? No, I meant from a financial point of view. I mean, it wouldn't fetch a good price. Well, Prosecutor Cadeau, what is the value of that urn? Oh yeah, in the third case of the third game, there's a part where if you press on a statement, the game penalizes you. So you gotta make sure the statement can be pressed. Ooh, this is why I save. Also, I learned something by reading the uh, second game, Justice for All's uh, TV Tropes page, that apparently a tell on uh, Mo the, the Clown and telling you when to not press is if he's smiling. Or if you can just discern, oh yeah, that's going to be a joke, don't press. The appraisers I spoke to said they couldn't attach a price to it. And I mean that in the worst sense. <laughs> he can't just be like, ah, you see, the they said that it was priceless. No, it is junk. So in other words, it was not the kind of item that Mask to Mask would normally go after. Ugh. Hmm. If I understand you correctly, Mr. Wright, you're saying that the theft of the sacred urn was not the work of Mask to Mask. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Actually, all I did was point out the contradiction. The argument made itself, but... Well, first of all, we need to get this issue cleared up. Was this last robbery the work of Mask to Mask or not? What do you have to say about this, Mr. Godot? They have to- <laughs> they went out of their way to animate his Adam's apple. And this coffee here, it's my own special blend. I call it Godot number 107. I'm trying to decide whether to cut down on the acidity or the bitterness. Why do I have a- now my brain just went coffee freaks. Let's pair Godot with your- with what's her name from Cyber Sleuth Digimon. If I could adopt Gumshoe, I would. I feel bad for him only affording instant noodles. He is a poor man. And that's the only thing I've got on my mind right now. Mr. Trite? What? If you're really a man, you should clean up your own mess. Um, sorry, but I don't get what you mean. 
If you're saying it wasn't Mask Damask that stole that urn, then it must be someone imitating Mask Damask's methods. A fake. A uh, fake Damask? Fake Damask? That sounds so ridiculous, but I like it. <laughs> Got a refill. Now, before I decide on my coffee, I believe some proof is in order, Mr. Trite. Proof that the person who appeared at Lordly Taylor that night was actually a fake. And the poor boy's trying his best, but he gets crapped on by everyone in the cast. Hmm. Though I don't approve of Mr. Godot's behavior, his point is valid. Mr. Wright, we're waiting. What do we have in here that could possibly prove that it was a fake? Ooh! The promotional poster! The promotional poster. Promotional poster. He's supposed to have a big fuck-off necklace. This one doesn't have a big fuck-off necklace. Let's see what other things, what other things are there. Okay, this one. Hat plume. The hat is kind of a weird teardrop oval. Has a mask on a pen. They are smiling. See, the mask itself seems correct. Kind of leaflet thingies going down the chest. And the uh, kind of just imprints on the collar. Not the collar, but like the diddly dee. Hmm. Yeah, it does seem that the other one is missing his, like, uh, diddly dee thing around his neck. Everything else seems on point with that. It looks like I'm gonna have to prove it. Now, I just hope that the... Presumably, I need to present... Hopefully, the game is nice and it allows you to present either the security fa camera photo or the publicity photo. But we'll have to see. Also, who took that photo for the publicity photo? Who knows? The world is wacky and evil. The, the world is wacky. I need proof that that person at Lordly Taylor was in fact... Fake Damask. Hmm. <laughs> Peter Parker. <laughs> Peter Parker. He's like, I'm gonna dress up as Mask Damask and take photos of myself. Now the question again, is it, do we want to show the publicity photo? I, I just hope that the game is nice and that it will accept either. The proof is right here. This looks like a photo taken by a security camera. But if you look closely, you'll notice something peculiar about it. Huh. Well then, why don't you go ahead and show us what it is? Go on, use this pointer and show us just what about this peculiar poster is peculiar. Hmm. I assume it's gonna be that. It's right here, of course. You mean, mask to mask? I have here a piece of reference I would like to, the court to take a look at. Isn't that the publicity photo I bought this morning? <laughs> The problem I have with the security camera photo is the brooch on Damask's chest. A breach? Here? Bailiff, get my steed! We need to retreat at once! <laughs> Judge, what? Did he flash back to his ancestor and they were being invaded? Phoenix, here's my evidence that Damask, Damask is a fake. Pulls out a Glock. <laughs> if, if Von Karma can bring a, a fucking whip in here, I can bring in a gun? A brooch, your honor. It's sort of a clasp for holding one's cape on. A clasp, eh? Ah, I see now. But the, the mask. But the mask, the mask in the security photo. Ah! He has no brooch! That brooch is the same on the emblem on Damask's calling card and serves as his symbol. But that means that whoever was fake, fake being Damask doesn't know what Damask's calling card looks like. But Ron had Damask's emblem on a f little flying air thingy. What is it called? Hot air balloon. What? 
but the thief that broke into Lordly Taylor wasn't wearing a brooch. In other words, this mask to mask is a fake. I've been fooled again! Uh, order! It's true! Undeniably true! Detective Gumshoe, how, how could you have overlooked this? Uh, I'm sorry, sir! I don't know how I... Got a refill. Hey now, you're an all-star. Get your game on. Get paid. If you're gonna have a pity party, invite me too. But Mr. Godot, you deserve some blame in this too. How could you have overlooked such a large brooch? Huh, the brooch you're talking about. Speaking of capes, I wish more capes had practical purpose. Batman's cape has weighted tips at the end so he can stun his enemies, so I wish more capes did that. To be fair, <laughs> Batman's cape has a lot of purpose <laughs> in its life. Do you mean this? The motherfucker got it. Wow! Ah! That that's Mask to Mask's brooch! But where did you find it? Well, I've always had a good nose for evidence. I got it at the crime scene. It was hidden in the shadow of a big female Buddha statue. Buddha statue? It must mean the Ami Fei statue. But why didn't you tell me about that, sir? I always put evidence always in my pocket. After all, it's the safest place for crucial evidence. Uh, this guy is one cool customer. Got a refill. It's a little early to be shaken up, isn't it, little lady? <laughs> that friend of yours left pretty little hickeys on there, too. Hickeys? Figuratively, figuratively speaking. Of course, I'm referring to Ron Delight's fingerprints. What? What? The defendant's fingerprints are on the brooch? Well, that's not good for us. I wish I could trust pockets as much as this dude. Uh, we all wish we had pockets as good as that. Order! Order in the court! Mr. Godot, let's see that brooch! What, do you have microscopic eyes? You can see the, the, the fingerprints on it? I've grown attached to my metallic girlfriend here. Take good care of her. Hmm. She, I mean, it appears to have torn off some clothing. There's a little bit of cloth left on the back. Obviously, there must have been a bit of a struggle that night at the crime scene. Oh, Phoenix, we have a problem. Found in the shadow of Ami Fei's statue. Looks like it was torn off of some clothing. Hmm. Ha! Huh. You mess with Godot. And you get burned. Uh, he's been playing me like a violin! Well, Judge, I'm about ready to call my next witness. Huh? You're done with me? But I haven't proved anything yet. You've proven your own incompetence. That's good enough for me. That doesn't sound good at all. Did you leave my message there? Oh, I missed that one. Where did you find that brooch? I found it in the trash. To be fair, you can find... Depending on the case, I wouldn't be surprised if we did find something important in the trash. Like a dead body. Bailiff, bring in the next witness into the courtroom. Finally time for Ace Detective to make his appearance, huh? One second is one drip of the coffee pot. Let's hurry it up. Shush! Silence! <laughs> now I see. It's all becoming clear. What's clear? Zavari! The truth has once again been elegantly revealed to me. What we have here is a judge and a prosecutor. A coffee maniac at that. Am I correct? Well, yes, that's right. Huh, not bad, not bad at all. You're the first person that's ever been able to penetrate my secret veil. Well, Sir Prosecutor, let me introduce myself. My name is Luke at me, ace detective and rising star illuminating the heavens. Boy, these two make a perfect pair. They'd either be best friends or they'd tear each other's heads off. I'm very impressed that the magnifying glass is able to stay on his eye. Maybe he's just stretching out his eye. We never do see it. 
<laughs> what he looks like while... Well, no, we do. We do, when he's cleaning it. But that's when he's not looking through it. And while you're voicing, like, five characters at a time, remember to stay hydrated. I've heard that on the night of the crime, you were all alone on security detail. You have heard correctly. My specially made monocle is worth more than a hundred Detective Gumshoes. If Detective Gumshoe is worth anything, that is. Hmm. Why was this guy all by himself anyway? There must be some reason. I'm sure of it. Huh. Well, considering that he knew about the blackmail to Delight's home... I do think that he has to be involved in that somewhat. He has to at least be involved in the blackmailing. But who knows? It would be weird if he knew about the blackmail without being the blackmailer. Well then, tell us what the special monocle of yours witnessed. Another topic, there's a girl who looks like a little girl, but is actually 22. Possibly more than that. This is real life, by the way. I have heard about that, like super famous cosplay girl in Japan, I believe, who does look very young. And then there was, that also reminds me of uh, Children of the Corn. The, I forget what the main psycho kid's name is, but he was played like by a 25 year old because he has a, like a genetic defect that stopped him quote unquote aging, at least visually. But let's see what Luke at me looked at. It was approximately one o'clock in the morning just after the date changed. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask to Mask, dancingly descended upon me. Just as I began to turn, the coward struck a fierce blow upon my noble head. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I awoke, he was gone. Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. So you didn't get a clear look at the criminal. My specially made monocle never misses a thing. However, that is limited to things that fall within my own visual range. But of course, that's only natural. I fail to see why the witness seems so proud of his performance that evening. Well, sir, old timer, let me explain. We are not speaking of any ordinary thief, but the king of thieves, the great mask to mask, my arch enemy. That is what my instincts and my years of experience tell me. Hmm, very well. Proceed with the cross-examination, Mr. Wright. And now we shall save because paranoia, paranoia, everybody's coming to get me. So that would be one o'clock in the morning of the 12th, correct? That's an impressive deduction, Sir Lawyer. You were on security detail that night. Where exactly were you at the time? A penetrating question! I was in the basement warehouse near the computer. Near the computer, huh? So then you weren't trying to remain hidden, I take it. Up to this point, I have tried to remain concealed while waiting for the thief. Yeah, he said the same thing yesterday, too. Gumshoe also said that they've never spotted the thief at the crime scenes before. Precisely! That is precisely why I chose not to hide that night. I knew that by not concealing myself, I would be putting pressure on the thief. It looks like the thief is the one applying pressure. On your pigeony head, that is. In any case... Shauna Rhea is her name, and the reason she, the way she looks like a kid is because it was a side effect of her surviv surviving brain cancer as an infant. Ah! So kind of like reverse, how, what was his name? Was it Andre the Giant? There was like, uh, I think there was one like famous giant man who had like something press on something in his brain that caused him to never shut off his, oh, I'm done growing limit. That's when my nemesis, the infamous Mask to Mask, <laughs> dancingly descended. From where exactly? Well... From the entrance, I suppose. Where else? So in actuality, he neither danced nor descended. Someone please save me. Although, oh, I wonder if she can consent, though. I mean, mentally, yeah. There are plenty of people that are like, 
body shape impaired, I suppose. But so long as they're actually an adult and mentally capable, because that's probably the measurement of consent, is if they are mentally well enough to be able to understand a situation and decide. Because there is, like, a guy who has such a low IQ that he legally can't consent to anything out there. I think in Florida, actually. There was a news story about him some time ago. So, how is it that you didn't notice the thief? My eyes were looking for the thief's shadow while my ears listened for his footfalls. But even so, the dastardly criminal managed to sneak up on me. It can only be due to his subtle, subtly camouflaged cape and soft-soled shoes. I hereby dub you Ace Dunce. And she has a show on TLC about her called I'm Shauna Rhea. Well, at least it's a very to-the-point title. You didn't see the criminal's face when that happened. Well, that's the difficult part. How should I put it... Uh, I saw his mask. That's all I could recall. Hmm, that's not very solid as far as testimony goes. However, fortunately I had my third monocle of the security camera at the ready. It captured his image perfectly. This should be sufficient, I believe. Hmm, well, as long as this photo is authentic, I don't see a problem here. Well, Mr. Godot, do you have a problem with the photo? Good, then let's continue with the testimony. That's a, that's hilarious. Darkness swallowed me before I could land a single strike. When I woke, he was gone. Attacked and knocked unconscious, and you weren't able to do a thing. That's certainly some very impressive detective work. <laughs> well, sir, lawyer, have you ever been suddenly struck on the head? Huh? Well, actually, yes, by a fire extinguisher. And what happened? I was knocked out. And you lost your memory, too. You see, you have no right to look down on me, then, do you? The only reason I didn't lose my memory was because I have more brains to begin with. <laughs> References. Oh, yeah, because that's, like, from many, many, many cases ago. That's... Like, I knew it happened, and I remembered it, but it's, like, it's kind of funny to recall that it's so long ago now. He may have brains, but the wiring to the self-reflection part seems to be severed. In any case, that was how I was, knocked senseless, and then... Thirty minutes later, I used an emergency phone to notify the police. About this thirty minutes, my silver cord was loosened and my soul fled to the golden halls of Elysium. As usual, I have no idea what this guy's saying. I think he's saying that he was out cold. I'm pretty sure that's not how amnesia works. Yeah, but this is Japanifornia. Memory can work however we want it. There's also magic! Literal spirit summoning! I don't think we can question anything! We're gonna have a murderous ghost sometime in the future, I bet! I mean, you don't just have a core mechanic of the game be like, Ah, yes, you have an assistant spirit medium who can summon the spirits and not have it literally be a murder, a murder weapon at some point. So, what happened during this 30 minutes? No one can say, Your Honor. That span of time has truly vanished into the ether. So what is he going on about? There's something suspicious about Detective Atme. How could he have not noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. Huh? Which piece? Yeah, which piece, actually? The real question is, why would he tell such obvious lie? Hmm. What do we have in here? Moved during the night of the crime. Hmm. So the two things that we need to focus upon is him not being able to tell when Damask came in, as well as, hmm, yeah. 
But if he danceably danced upon you, why would you turn and get hit? Because specifically it says the back of the head, right? Yeah, back of the head. And 30 minutes later... Hmm... There's something suspicious. How could he have not noticed when the thief came in? Also, he says he was knocked unconscious before he could fight back. But that can't be right. It contradicts the evidence. What evidence? Because it moved. Could that be it? Hmm. I wonder if every villain in Ace Attorney is... Singing Born Free by Kid Rock. Who knows? I don't think I even know that song. Hmm. Because the only things relevant to this section is Ami Fei's statue, which was moved, the camera data, the sword, and the security camera photo. Hmm. Yeah, which piece? That's when my nemesis... Just as I began to turn. So I think this is the main one. Let's press again to revise my memory. You didn't see the criminal's face. Saw his mask. Hmm. Hmm. Just trying to think. And also this, before I could land a single strike. <laughs> Let him cook. I'm trying to cook. Because hmm, there's, just as I began to turn, before I could land a single strike. <sighs> How could he have not landed a strike? If this was torn off! <laughs> Mr. Atme, could you take a look at this? With that special monocle of yours. Aha! This belongs to the criminal mastermind, my arch nemesis, Mask de Mask. It is, in point of fact, Master Mask's brooch. It was found on the floor of the basement warehouse. I wonder how. <laughs> I wonder how that happened. Uh, elementary, my dear lawyer. Obviously, it wasn't glued on well enough. Well, it wasn't glue. Not quite. It clearly shows signs of being ripped off of a piece of clothing. Ripped off? Aha! We can only deduce that the thief struggled with someone that night. That's the only thing I can think of. And there's only one person that was in a position to have struggled with the... Uh, to have a struggle with the thief. The only person that was on security duty that night. You, Detective at me. <laughs> Since Damask has a star in his name, does everyone have to say Mask Star Damask? That would be hilarious if they did that in the anime. Detective at me. You must have fought with the thief that night. So why did you lie in your testimony to the court? Witness! Giving false testimony is a serious crime! Uh, I... N no! Wait, uh, just a moment, Sir Old Timer! Don't talk to me like I'm living in a nursing home! <laughs> I just remembered, Your Honor. I was just confused because I've been dealing with so many cases lately. The true measure of a man is in the amount of the work he does. That's what I always say. Nick, you can only handle one case at a time, isn't that right? You talk too much! To be fair, because here's the thing. Luke at me is a detective. He handles multiple cases because they're ongoing investigations. D L Nick is a lawyer. He only has three days <laughs> to do these complicated things. Witness, so are you now saying that you and the thief fought? Hold on. That's quite enough, Your Honor. Excuse me? 
Save the big questions for the testimony. That's one of my rules. Indeed, I understand. I look at me agree completely. This is the same judge that gives you a double penalty for suggesting that the murder weapon is under his beard. To be fair, that does imply that he was uh, complicit in murder to a degree, so or at least complicit in the hiding of evidence. And <laughs> I will do. <laughs> The world is mad. And plus, I think that's like the only time he really strikes back, as it were. Indeed, it's true that I looked away for the, for, from the door for a brief moment. However, look at me cannot be so easily discombobulated. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon from the side and rendered me senseless. A true gentleman fights only with his own fists, but they were not enough. His first blow struck true. Bam! And that's all she wrote. But that can't be right, because he grabbed the weapon from across the room. So in the end, you did catch a glimpse of Mask to Mask. Correct. It was during his third crime that he struck me from behind. What? It was during his third crime? But this is his fifth. So he should give double penalties for anyone calling him old-timer. Nah, because they didn't accuse him of a crime. It seems that my memory has become a tad jumbled, so to speak. Well, that's certainly understandable. I myself always get confused about which testimony goes on with which case. But th that cannot be good. That would be funny if that <laughs> happened in this game. And we have to, like, when do we ever get to cross-examine the judge? I want to yell, hold it. So why did you look away from the door anyway? In addition to the camera, I prepared a variety of other sensors as well. The alarm on one of those had gone off, so I had, go so I had to go check the data. That's why I went to the computer. Elegantly, of course. So you were momentarily vulnerable when you were working on the computer. What should I do? Should I ask more questions? About the sensor. Where? What kind of sensors are you talking about? There are other places in the basement that someone could enter and exit from. There are air, there are air conditioner ducts, sewer pipes, and a cat door as well. I hooked up heat detecting infrared and ultraviolet sensors to each of them. That's a lot of hardware. Was it all yours? Lordly Taylor Department Store was kind enough to provide the monitoring hardware. Cross examine the judge. Place Ace Attorney Investigations one. Ooh, I do plan on playing the Investigations games at some point. Naturally, the security camera that took the photo belongs to them as well. In other words, he couldn't have rigged the equipment. Huh. <laughs> Has that cleared up any doubts you had about me, Sir Lawyer? However, cannot be so easily discombobulated. Um, what does that mean, discombobulated? Hmm. Young people these days, they really irritate me. They allow perfectly good old words to die until everyone forgets what they mean. Sorry, but what exactly does it mean anyway? No, I've forgotten. What was I saying? Jeez, it's better than old people who forget what they were saying five seconds ago. Well, it looks like we've cleared that up. You can go on with your testimony. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon. Plus, I don't think Ace Attorney Investigations 1 is worth playing. I'll still play it myself, just so I can get a full experience. Surely it can't be worse than... <laughs> Pros like, uh, cross-examining Mo. What do you mean by weapon from the side? Naturally, that thief had no idea that I, Luke at me, was hiding in the area. He grabbed the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. Sword? You mean the sword that was all twisted like a tree branch. But hopefully you'll enjoy it if you still plan on it. It's better uh, to like it than hate it. That's, that's what I always try to say if I criticize something. It's like, if you enjoy thing, good for you. You were able to enjoy a thing I was not. Correct. Fortunately for me, the blade was not sharp. Okay, so he is talking about the Shishishito. So the thief armed himself with a sword, and what about yourself, witness? Only fights with his fists? You had that much faith in your own fighting abilities? But of course, in college, I was the second in charge of the boxing club. I'm sorry if I failed to find that appropriately impressive. However, my opponent in the ring this time was my arch nemesis, Mask de Mask. <laughs> this guy's a real piece of work. 
Speaking of old people, it's uh, like them to set an iPhone's language to Japanese and forget how they did it. Like, there are 15 different menus to set the language. Ain't that just the way? They're messing around them, bam! They have no idea how to retrace those steps. Can you tell us a little more about what happened? My opponent was both powerful and vicious. You might say he was powerishious. P powerishious? I assumed the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. That, of course, was checkmate. My opponent had bested me. What do I do now? Should I ask more questions? You were blinded. So what was this flash of light that blinded you? I was bathed in a golden light. That seemed to come from the statue of the woman. The statue of Ami Fei, I'm guessing. Well, that wasn't very much help at all. Well, what do you think, Nick? Well, there's one thing that I'm absolutely sure of now. Yeah, what is it? This look at me guy, he's definitely hiding something. But why? I think I'm starting to figure out what exactly happened that night. And about the true nature of this detective. However, cannot be just sloppy. Unfortunately, the thief grabbed a weapon. So either that one, or that one. Hmm. I just thought every case was just okay, but I feel like it doesn't reach significant heights. That's fair. It's kind of like me with uh, the second case of the first game. Because I feel like for what it covers, it should be much more grand and difficult. Hmm. Unless you can remind me of what highs there were. <laughs> hmm. His first blow. Because all we have is photo, shishito, camera date, and the statue. Hmm. I'm trying to think it through. What could it be? What could it be? Hmm. The thief grabbed a weapon from the side. Hmm. Trying to think, because it, hmm, especially this one where he says he was bl blinded by a flash of light from the statue. Do eh? Nope, that one's wrong. Hmm. What did I care? Trying to think, my brain is just on fire here. Because let's... Because it obviously... Hmm. Hmm. I'll admit it's a nice change of pace, but if someone asks me why investigations are worth playing, being able to move around physically isn't one of the things. <laughs> Not only can you go places, you can move around them. In the shadow of the phase statue. Hmm. So let's go through all his testimony. Looked away for a brief moment. Because one of the sensors went off. We don't need to do that. Look at me. Cannot be so easily discombobulated. That's nothing to do with anything. The thief grabbed a weapon from the side. Do we present statue here? No. Hmm. Because, like, we brought up the, the Shishijito, so I don't think... Hmm. Let's quickly press again. Weapon from the side. Grab the sword from the statue that was standing by the door to the warehouse. So we can't be just bring up the sword... 
Hmm. So that is interesting that Phoenix specifically points out so he is talking about the Shito. Because hmm. I doubt this line fights only with his fist, but they were not enough. Let's quickly refresh my memory. Have much faith, but of course, boxing club, however. So yeah. The only ones of any note were... The thief grabbed a weapon, but the statue did nothing, and the sword was brought up in there, and it feels like it would be a tad odd if the game would, like, bring it up in there and then want us to present it. Or maybe that's the game being like, hey, moron, present the sword, and I'm just second-guessing everything. His first blow struck true. Could just be a fancy way of saying he hit me with one without missing. But it's extra interesting that he specifically said maybe the Damask brooch again because found in the shadow of Faye's statue. Let's read again. Tell us a little more. Opponent was both powerful and vicious. Assume the at me fighting stance, but a sudden flash of light blinded me. So was this flash? I was bathed in a golden light that seemed to come from the statue. Hmm. Let's see. Did you read my message? Ah, yes, I did. And would you like a hint? Hmm. He's definitely hiding something. I'm trying to think. Eh, if you can find a way to sneakily sneak one in, I wouldn't mind, because I'm trying to think of all the logical things, because the only evidence... You haven't revealed the faulty testimony yet. All right, so let's press everything again. Eh. I could have sworn that I pressed everything. Let's go through everything. So it could be that I needed to ask about the computer as well. Which uh, goes to show that I'm a fool. So, did the computer belong to Lordly Taylor as well? Correct. Well, except for the program that manages the data. That was specifically designed by me. Look at me. In that case, he could have easily manipulated the data. <laughs> What's wrong, sir lawyer? Hmm. Then maybe the... Look at me fighting style? Because that's the only other, like, choice thing. What is this at me fighting style? I'm sorry, but that's a trade secret I really can't say anymore. But I suppose I can tell you if you absolutely must. The main thing is to put your back to the wall. That way no one can get behind you. That's it? That's the at me fighting style? Hmm, well, Mr. Wright, what about that testimony? That feels like such a weird thing to be like, you'd think the flash of light would be more important. <laughs> I feel like the only bad thing about Investigations 1 was the final case. Having an unsatisfying conclusion really does get in the way of my enjoyment. I feel that as well. A bad ending can taint an experience, but a good ending can elevate a mediocre experience sometimes. But yeah, that's very important. Of course it's important. We've learned a detective's secret technique, after all. Yes, indeed. I'll remember to use it if I ever take a walk alone at late at night. Why the heck is he eyeballing me like that? Does the judge think that I'm going to come for him in the night? <laughs> now then, witness. We'll go ahead and add that secret information to your fistal testimony. Which... <laughs> but the thief's blow landed upon my third eye. Except it can't be, because it was to the back of the head. A <laughs> judge about to throw hands. Nick about to go and apprentice under Shelly to kill her and become the next to kill her. I wonder if there are fan fiction based on that. Punished right goes to become the next to kill her. Detective Atme, your testimony is crumbling like a house of cards. What fun is fun this is, sir lawyer. Is it truly a pleasure to cross swords with you? And now, once again, you have thrown down the gauntlet at my armored feet. I don't care about your feet, dude. 
I do believe that this is what you said yesterday. No, the coward must have wormed his way through somewhere besides the door. Then my arch nemesis struck me on the head from behind with his gruesome item here. From behind, huh? But just now you testified that, you, that he struck you on the forehead. I hardly think you could forget where you were hit on the head. Uh, it seems I've made another mistake. I think that should really begin to crumble your testimony. You're lying about multiple things, man. Detective at me, that's not the only strange part of your testimony. What do you mean by that? For example, the very fact that you hid the calling card from the police itself is strange. It is. You'd think he'd want to stop crime more than anything. Look at me, his nose is so long he can puncture armor helmets of that thing. He's a Tinga. Fear him. It's almost as if you were afraid they were going to help with security. <coughs> Geniuses such as myself have always been misunderstood. How sad. Doofenshmirtz looking ass. Do not besmirch Doofenshmirtz. He was a poor man, not like this Luke at me. That's wrong. Ooh. Objection. To err is human. To forgive is divine. Humans aren't machines. They have souls, feelings. They live, they die, they love, they hate, and yes, they even make mistakes. Hey, hold on! It's not as pretty as that! Really? What is it like then? Always chase a riddle down to the end? That's one of my rules. <laughs> Doofensmirch is a good father and don't appreciate the slander of him. Exactly. This is it. This might just be my chance to turn things around. What is it exactly that you're proposing? Very well, Your Honor. The defense asserts... Hmm... At me is no ace detective would... Considering some of the things that this, this diddly D has thrown at me... Could be anything. <laughs> Mr. At me is mask to mask. But I don't think so. I don't think so. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Mr. At me is no ace detective feels like the joke answer. This Mr. At me, no, never mind. This Mr. At me is a fake is the joke answer. So it does feel like the only one, like accusation that makes sense is the Mr. At me is mask to mask. Then again, the Mr. At me is no ace detective, but why would that correlate specifically to at me not wanting the police to help with security. Hmm. So it's not the this Mr. At me is a fake. Doubt. Mr. At me is no ace detective. That one feels kind of superfluous to everything. Mr. At me is mask to mask. But it can't be. Because we psych locked him. We asked him what happened, he lied, and we broke his psych lock to reveal that he got hit upside the back of his head, and that he was knocked out. But at the same time... Hmm... I'm trying to think... Just try the third option. What do you have to lose? True, we have lots of health, and I doubt the game's going to be mean this late. <laughs> so, yeah, that's a little quirk of this case. Mr. At me is, Damask. The answer is simple. It's all clear to me now. Detective Luke At me's true identity is actually Mask Damask. Ah! Wow, that that reaction. <laughs> order, order in the court, Mr. Wright. What is the meaning of this? There are too many unnatural parts to Mr. Atme's story. 
He says he was hiding at the crime scenes, which is why no one ever saw him there. And then in his last case, he manages to outperform Detective Gumshoe and the entire police force to miraculously retrieve the stolen treasure. I really like this case, but it does get confusing. Th that's because I analyzed the crime scene data and made an exquisitely elegant deduction. I picked up clues that the police overlooked in order to arrive at a... Oh, please. The explanation is far simpler than that, detective at me. The truth is that you are, in fact, Mask to Mask. <laughs> but, Mr. Wright, th this photo, it clearly shows Mask to Mask. The security camera belongs to Lordly Taylor Department Store. He shouldn't have been able to manipulate it. He didn't need to manipulate it. He gained access to the warehouse under the pretense of providing security. Then he simply dressed up the f as the thief and stole the urn. So, the ace detective is actually an ace thief. Is this true, witness? <laughs> Damask Simo is pure genius, and so am I, Luke at me! Ace Detective! You're very clever to come to such a conclusion. I impress her, lawyer. But what? Witness, you... you're admitting it? Nick, now's your chance! Yeah, it's time to put this last nail in this guy's coffin. This is too easy. What the... what the fuck is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is going on? <laughs> your maniacal laugh is on point, I gotta say. Thank you very much! Detective at me! When you assume the I- Did- did- what? Did he smack- what? He threw coffee at me?! Godot blend number 102. My personal favorite. <laughs> Mr. Godot! The ace detective is actually an ace thief. I smell a best smelly novel. He did the thing! There's only one problem. It simply isn't true. But, Mr. Godot, Mr. Wright has made some very strong points, and I... I will admit my opponent has woven a compelling narrative out of whole cloth, but it is, in fact, nothing more than a patchwork quilt, Mr. Trite. If this detective really is the thief, then show us the proof of your claim. But it had better be as hot and as perfect as the coffee dripping down your face. Well, Mr. Wright, don't just stand there. I'll have to look through the evidence to think on. Well, I stand correct. He might be taking performance-enhancing substance. He is the assaulted phoenix of coffee. That beats my fan fiction. <laughs> this court would like to see this decisive proof you have. Quickly! Huh? Oh, yes, of course. Well, what's the big rush? Are you all right, Nick? Admi looks pretty rattled now. I'd like to finish this right now if I can. Can I really do it? The decisive evidence that proves Mr. Luke at me is in fact a mask. Hmm. Is it yet to be found because you'd think the obvious thing would be to go, aha, we have the thing. But sometimes the game doesn't do that. And I don't think that this is the kind of situ like the kind of question that we could answer with, oh, the evidence hasn't been found yet, because then that throws all of our evidence out, or like all of our speculation, I believe. Hmm. I'm trying to think. Ba 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 ba. I also want to find that Phoenix never once corrects Godot about him getting Phoenix's name wrong. He's probably just like, I. I'm, I, I'm just going to get along with the case. I don't care. These prosecutors are all insane. At least it's a 50-50 shot. That is true. But I'm just trying to think it through because I want to, like, analyze it and not just brute force my way too much. So I'm just trying to think. Quickly. Trying to get my brain going, because what evidence do we have? Have 50 few shot to analyze through it or brute force it? If it comes down to it, we can brute force it. 
So I'm trying to think. I mean, he never corrected Red White on calling him Phoenix wrong. But at the same time. I'm trying to think. Blah, blah, blah. My brain is melting. I'm trying to think. Because, like, we have evidence that our guy it wasn't there, but that's irrelevant right now. We need evidence that proves. Because hmm. evidence that correlates to this guy being found. I don't think we have any evidence even remotely tied to him. To, to at me. Counterpoint, Godot doesn't lose relevancy after one investigation and one trial. Eh. True, Red White. Again, Red White should have been much bigger. Much, a much bigger threat. The warehouse camera went off once. That doesn't prove anything. Hmm. Especially because the camera was... And we don't have any evidence that, like... He could have altered it with the program. Damask knocked out at me during the crime with a blow to the head. Security camera. If anything, I would never have gone down this path because the brooch still had to be knocked off at some point. Well, I guess we can just press has yet to be found because, again, to be fair, to be fair, the game has already been a bit silly because... You'd think that the Luke at me fighting style is irrelevant, at least at first thought, and that the blinding light would be more important. But no, the Luke at me fighting style was very important, so maybe it has yet to be found. Proof? Of course I, I, I've got nothing. Huh, it was what I thought. Also, Red White literally says he has the police on his payroll and he gets denied in court real quick. A man has to hold his head up high no matter how bad things get, after all. Ah, uh, I see. I thought perhaps you had some evidence to back up your assertion. This is no good. I've got to stay on the attack. I'll never get another chance to prove this guy is the thief. Don't give up, Nick. Think harder and try again. It's no good. I'm just not ready yet. But are you going to just give up and let us lose this? So you've come to your senses, have you, sir, lawyer? I... Uh, I can't think of a counterattack at all. It seems the cloud of suspicion surrounding this witness has lifted. Mr. Godot, if you have anything further to add, then... What? Well, who? Who are you? That doesn't really matter right now, does it? Miss Delight, what are you doing here? Nicky boy, the thing you've been looking for... I think I found it. You mean, that bag? No, not the bag. What's in the bag? Well, but... Oh, uh, dip, 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 dip. That's the, the... Okay. Thing number one. That is the urn. Thing number two. Somebody broke it. It's covered in paint. Just like the paint from the crime scene, somebody broke it because it originally said, I am, and it is currently saying, Ami. So? No. Are you saying, potentially, that... Could look at me. Did look at me accidentally smash. My brain went quickly to be like, ah, oh, what if this is a trick and, like, Andrews is revealed in there, like, to reveal to be a part of this somehow, but no. Andrews was far too cool and nice at the beginning, but then far too frantic at the end when things went bad. She's far too honest. I don't think Andrews is involved in this. You don't need to look at the bloopers of season two of the anime. They're really funny. I think I will. If there's no spoilers to the future games. 
especially after I finish this game. But, but back to my thoughts. I don't think Andrews is involved. But Luke at me had been involved for a while. He had access to the, the not, not the security cameras themselves and the sensors, but he did have access to the software that he himself made. He admitted it. He made the software and therefore could manipulate the camera a bit. Like, tell it to ignore for a sp certain amount of time. Season 2 is the entirety of this game, plus the first case of Justice for All. The first case of Justice for All? That's a choice. <laughs> I guess that case doesn't really tie into anything, but the <laughs> so that's kind of funny. But, yeah, back to this. What if Luke at me was hired to look after things in Lordly Taylor and then accidentally broke the urn and uh, afraid he faked the theft but yeah cuz or would he have it's covered in paint so it had to have been in the box near the statue or at least where the statue was originally when paint fell it makes sense when you play through this game further <laughs> okay but I'm just try I'm trying to think because number one, it, the the urn appeared in Lordly Taylor originally and went there in a hand carved box by Maya, and it was the broken mess of, of it was the broken mess. This this it was this broken mess. It said I am instead and wasn't fully put together well. But in between it arriving at Lordly Taylor, it got smashed. And it obviously did leave the premises. And we still have the point that Mask to Mask steals pieces of art that are of value. But then why would Ron continue to be saying that... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go now. <laughs> did you read my message now? I'm sorry I keep asking that, but I need to know if you read them. Oh. Do you ever check those plays on Phoenix Wright? I'm guessing no, but you need to check them out. I have not checked them out, but I I really should. I read a I did read a note in the TV tropes for the second game that apparently, or may, and I think maybe it was mentioned in the stream. It 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 sounded familiar, but just reading it is still amusing. That apparently, Shelley the killer just up and up shoots the guy at the end of the case, which is just like. Not really a master assassin if you do it in the middle of court, dude. But well, let's go on. My my theorizing is just stalling. Well, th th that's the sacred urn, Nick. It's the urn, uh, and it was in Luke Atme's bag. Order, order, order! You, Madame, that urn. Where did you find it? You'll never believe it. It was in the office of Mr. Fancy Pants Ace Detective Luke Atme. Oh, Desi, you're the best! Sacred Urn updated. Has pink splotches all over it. While you're just being blindsided by everything, remember to stay hydrated. Well, how do you explain that one, Mr. Ratme? Even you're going to have a hard time weaseling out of this one. Huh, pathetic. Mr. Godot, do you have something to wish to say? Yes, Your Honor. It simply amazes me how quickly times change. In the old days, a man was to be taken at his word. It's truly sad. You're still denying that Mr. Atme was involved? Before casting aspersions at Detective Atme, consider the young lady here. Your name is Desiree. Desiree Delight, is that correct? Yes, what about it? Ha. Huh. How charming. The lengths that a woman is willing to go to save her husband is truly inspiring. What are you insinuating? As the wife of the criminal, you could have discovered that stolen urn anywhere. Including the office of the good detective here. I mean, <laughs> this theme slaps, and it's the detective's theme too. It is pretty good. So you found the urn, what does that prove? It certainly doesn't prove where the urn was before you found it. What? I just brought it here from the detective's office. Please, madam. 
This town is already filled to the brim with lies. Any more could only compound the tragedy we have been witness to. You're wrong! I would never! I would never do such a thing! The judge is one of the most easily manipulated people I've ever seen. Make one good point and roots for you. Yep. Miss Delight. Please, Nicky boy, you've got to help me talk some sense into these people. There must be some way. I've got to prove that Ern was actually in the Atme Detective Agency. Hmm. The problem is they pr probably won't care about what I saw. Show fingerprints on the urn? Hmm. Show fingerprints and then say yourself. Uh, to be fair, there is no health counter thing there, so we should be fine. I can prove where the urn was by the fingerprints on it. Fingerprints, eh? Oh, come on now! Now you're really making me laugh, sir lawyer. Fingerprints indeed. He is wearing gloves, I guess. May I go on? Good. Now, to be perfectly understandable if my fingerprints were on the urn, after all, it was I who was guarding the urn in the first place. That's a bit of backseating there. Not true. But I did notice that there was, like, no health reason to it, unless the game is just like, aha, random ending. But I doubt they'd ever do that. I don't think they would. In any case, I'm willing to... Always in the habit of wearing gloves, as you can see. So unfortunately, my fingerprints wouldn't be evidence of anything. What about it, Mr. Wright? This witness's fingerprints would mean nothing anyway. But Nick, what are you going to do? I've come too far to turn back now. Anley must have brought the urn back to his office yesterday. And there I'm sure someone must have left their fingerprints on it. The defense proposes that the fingerprints of this person should be on the urn. Oh, that's the back seating part. Yeah, that's that's a little too far. Because, like, I thought you said do fingerprints and then say that you yourself, Phoenix Wright, saw it there in the box. But that's two steps ahead and two steps too far. But, yeah, because Phoenix did touch the urn when it was still in the bag and then we were interrupted by Atme. So what is all this fuss about fingerprints anyway? Mr. Atme. Do you recall the events of yesterday? Hey, Nick, come on, open it up. Hey, wait a minute. We can't just open up his private property. Don't be such a fuddy-duddy. This is an important investigation. Well, what's in there? Hang on a sec. I'm taking it out now. Whatever it is, it feels kind of hard and smooth. Well, hello there! It's true that I didn't get a chance to look in the bag at the time, but I did touch what was inside. What? You touched it? And I remember it very well. It was smooth and hard. B well, uh, th that was just... Your Honor, I'd like the court to examine the fingerprints on that urn. If my fingerprints are on there, then it proves that the urn was in the Detective Atme's office. Well, even if your fingerprints are on the urn, it still doesn't prove when they were put there, does it? Of course it does. W what do you say? It's not what I say, but what Adrian Andrews, the person in charge of the exhibition, said. What a brilliant way to prove the urn was at Atme's office. I do like that they took that small little bit that at first you'd think, oh, we just, uh, it's just hinting at something. No, it actually plays in, like... The act of Phoenix trying to take a look at and grabbing the thing in the bag actually played into the case. That's cool. I polished it until it was just about glowing. I thought maybe I could make it look more valuable. If she polished it that much, she must have removed any and all fingerprints on it. And the only chance I had to get my fingerprints on it after... After that was yesterday at the Admi Detective Agency. Ha! <laughs> this blend. Good old blend 107. I've decided... It's a little too bitter after all. <laughs> he was actually smoking, Jesus. Order! 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 I accept the defense's request. Bailiff, take this urn and... Wait! Wait a moment, Your Honor. There's no need for that. No need to say. 
Precisely. I already know why Mr. Wright's Phoenix... I already know Mr. Wright's fingerprints are on the urn. What are you saying? Yes, I've finally broken him down. Also, I can bet that coffee isn't good for dough. It's causing him to go gray. And here, I thought they just stunted growth. <laughs> Take a good look, everyone. Unable to fight a rival worthy of my genius, I was forced to create one by myself. Here I am, the tragic clone. This guy's nuttier than a fruitcake. You see, it was me all along. I am the one and only Musk to Musk. How the fuck did he get his nose in there? Seriously. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed my little performance. <laughs> I was expecting him to fall. <laughs> the nose retracts. Well, Mr. Godot, what's Mr. Atley's condition? He's still in the lobby, laughing insanely, Your Honor. I wish I could enjoy the joke as much as he seems to be. Well, it looks like the matter has been settled. I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. But this can't be the end. Th this can't be the end. Even though... But this can't be the end, though. We know it can't be the end because we have further evidence. Who was blackmailing Delight? Why? Yeah. Well, let's go and find out. Woo! I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Besmirching him with the title of thief. Nick, you were right after all. Yeah, I guess Mr. Delight really wasn't the thief. Well, see you on the next episode of Dragon Ball Z. This <laughs> can't be. I, well, unless you're leaving. And if you are leaving, thank you for stopping by. If it's just a joke about this not being the end. Well, let's see. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight. All right, who did that now? Dude, there's a ton of evidence in their cases that doesn't get used. But still, th this feels too short for it not to be used. You're wrong. Wrong, I tell you. Um, I mean, not exactly wrong so much, but actually not right is what I was really trying to say. Oh no, he's not. This can't be happening. The thief... The sneaky, odious thief who's been stealing all the treasures. It's me. I'm him. I'm the one you want. I'm the thief, I tell you. So do it. Pronounce me guilty, please! I don't know what kind of a kangaroo court you all think this is, but... Objection. The true identity of the thief has already been proven. Please hurry and pass judge. What are you talking about? I already confessed. I'm the thief, I tell you. <laughs> Your on voice is excellent. Thank you. Mr. Godot, don't just stand there drinking coffee. Huh. Hey there, Mr. Thief. Yes, yes, sir. If you're really a man, then clean up your own mess. I I'm sorry. I I'm afraid I just don't have any idea what you mean. If you are mask to mask, then prove it. That's what I'm... That's what it means. But yes, sir. I I'll be happy to. He says he'll be happy to, Nick. It's kind of cute. He's 100% committed to his fantasy. Maybe he really is just that delusional, but... What even... What is even the point? <laughs> I did indeed read it. Noting that there's a ton of evidence that doesn't get used, but... Just not in a case... How... And come to think of it... Aside from the tutorial cases, how many cases even last a single day in this game, in this series? It can't be that many past the first game. In fact, I think there's only one, and that was the tutorial case. Good boy. Just remember one thing. A boy only gets one chance in his life to become a man. I, I know that. I won't fail, I swear. Okay, then. Talk. We're all listening. Oh, well, let's all have a listen to this confession. Because he did become obsessed with Mask to Mask. The truth is, I've been Mask to Mask all along. I mean, you can't prove that I'm not actually Mask to Mask, can you? 
I don't have an alibi for the night the urn was stolen, after all. I donned my costume that night and dancingly descended upon the scene of the crime. Look, you can see right there in the photo. That's me. As for my brooch, I snagged it on the door handle and it got torn off, that's all. Hmm. I don't like the direction this trial has taken. If this is how every trial goes, at least with me, anyway. Ha! Huh. You're doing great. <laughs> Stop it, Mr. Godot. You're embarrassing me. Like I said, you're only going to get one chance to testify, all right? But if you make it through this with flying colors, I'll keep my promise, too. I'll make sure you can stay locked up in prison as the one and only true Mask de Mask. The only time someone confesses right off the bat is when they didn't do it. Would be hilarious if it was inverted at some point. Thanks so much, Mr. Godot. I'll do my best. All right, Mr. Wright. I'm afraid it's time for the cross-examination. Uh, even the judge is <laughs> just done with this case at this point. But then what about the other guy? <laughs> what about his confession? Why is your confession more important than the other guy's confession, dude? You may think you're the real mask to mask, but your wife thinks you're delusional. I haven't told Desi yet about my true identity, I mean. I believe me, I've got my reasons. With the way your room is decked out, how could she not know about it? Hmm, even thieves have complicated family situations, I suppose. What should I do? It sounds like we're about to get sidetracked again. Yeah, hmm. Well, hmm. The judge might get, hmm. Ba, 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 ba. Hmm. Hmm. I don't feel like this one's important. We'll leave it. Ron's wife looks like a pilot, and that makes her interesting. It's because she's a motorcycle rider. Well, why don't you continue with your testimony for now? Hmm. Let's press on everything until things, things. Um, I thought you were going to be the one to show us the proof. You know, that you're the real mask to mask and not just some kind of obsessed fanboy. Hey, no, that's not fair. Why do I have to do all the hard work anyway? Maybe because you're the one making the outrageous claim for a change. Come on, Nick, you know that Mr. Delight couldn't have committed the crime. You're the one with the fancy law degree. It's time to put it to work already. I need some kind of proof that Ron couldn't possibly be mask to mask. Well, I guess you had uh, if you had that kind of proof, we wouldn't still be here, would we? For the time being, maybe I need to shift strategy. I should try to show that Mr. Delight couldn't have stolen the urn. Anyway, I... I don't have an alibi for that night the urn was stolen after all. I assume one of these could be used, but let's press on it. You've got no alibi. I've been a judge for a long time, and this is the first time I've ever heard a defendant brag about having no lullaby. But I, but I tell you, I was in the Lordly Tailor that night. Uh, no, that's too vague, even for me. Uh, to be more precise, I was down in the basement warehouse. Hold on. What is it, Nick? Where was Ron Delight when the crime happened, anyway? Also, come to think of it, why does he constantly does that? My brain suddenly goes that he has, like, some kind of earphone and somebody is telling him what to say. Because of how he does that, like, shaking his head to the side thing. That's just me going random conspiracy, but let's see. If we can prove he had an alibi after all, this, uh, this case will be a piece of cake. Well, you're right, but... Huh. You think you can prove that? Wake up and smell the coffee. Well, I think maybe I can. Mr. Wright, do you have any evidence that shows the defendant has an alibi? I think so, because... Blackmail letter and the uh, wallet. The wallet was definitively found there at 1 a.m. Uh, 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 it's Mask Star to Mask. You have to say it right. <laughs> uh, I say I have evidence. I have the evidence. Or do you think I'm still some sort of third-rate rookie? Oh, I've never seen you this angry before. I'm not surprised. Anger is the last refuge of the pathetic. 
I thought I was more confident than angry. Well, then let's see the evidence already. Show to the court the evidence that proves where your client was the night of the crime. Wallet! Mr. Delight, this wallet belongs to you, correct? Ah, uh, yes, it does. I lost it somewhere. Mr. Wright, when you find a wallet, you should report it to the police right away. Ah, no, you don't understand. This is an important piece of evidence. Evidence? Mr. Delight, when did you first notice that you'd lost your wallet? Uh, let's see. I think it was on the night of the crime. But I know I still had it when Desi and I went out for dinner. This wallet was found at approximately 1 a.m. at KB Security Headquarters. I got a question. Does your health replenish at any point during a single case? I assume that your health replenishes after you either finish a... I assume it is after you complete a trial section. So, like, if the judge calls for a recess, I assume that it would be... And, like, the game gives you the option to save is when I think you heal. Phoenix, you bluff through every case. You're a third-rate rookie. No, no, no. He's a first-rate rookie. What? Surely you're not serious. Yes, I am serious. This proves that Mr. Delight was in fact at KB Security that night. No! So if the defendant was at KB Security at 1 o'clock in the morning, then that proves that he has a watertight alibi. No! Furthermore, considering the distance between Lordly Taylor and KB Security, it would have taken 30 minutes to get there by car. According to Larry, anyway. I always save scum when I get something wrong, because I was curious. Haha, <laughs> mood. Well, Mr. Gato, do you have anything to say? And stop drinking that coffee! Come on, Mr. Thief. Don't let this guy beat you. Tell him why he's wrong. You're the only one who calls me Thief, Mr. Gato. All right, I'll try. I'll do it. I will. He's really got Mr. Delight all worked up. Is this like the inverse of badgering a witness, encouraging a witness? Yeah, he's like a kid on his first day of school. Look, it's just ridiculous. Why would I have dropped my wallet at KB Security? Someone must have planted it there to make it look like I was there and not at the heist. Why would anyone do that? Planted it there? He's really reaching now. Mr. Delight. You probably dropped your wallet when you took it out to use this, didn't you? The key card to KB Security's CEO's office. No! Huh. That was a pretty good try, Mr. Trite. Unfortunately, you've overlooked one small thing. What? Motive, of course. Why would this thief go to KB Security in the middle of the night anyway? Hmm. Well, Mr. Wright, it looks like you need some more evidence after all. Ah, uh, this stupid kid. Now then, let's see your evidence. The evidence that shows why Mr. Delight went to KB Security. But I still want to know why Luke had me had the, knew the blackmail letter existed. Mr. Delight, I believe you've seen this before, correct? Ah, uh, that's... What is it? A blackmail letter. That's what it looks like from the contents. B blackmail? Yes. Basically, it says, bring $50,000. Hmm, that certainly sounds like blackmail, all right. I feel the motive isn't really a strong reason to suspect someone. Of going where their blackmail letter told them to go? Maybe I'm just missing something. But at the same time, a lot of people could... It, it's like, they need motive, opportunity... And something else, I think, for proper, like, ah, we suspect you. At the time of the theft, Mr. Delight was dealing with this blackmailer himself. In KB Security's CEO office, a full half an hour away from the scene of the crime. Uh, uh. No, 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 no! Why is he so upset that we're getting this guy off the hook? What is this Godot's deal? Order! 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 So when the theft of the urn occurred, the defendant was at KB Security. It looks like a perfect case for the defense. 
You may see it as a perfect case, Judge, but to me... Well, let's just say that my Godot Blend 107 impresses me a lot more. What are you trying to say? You say the thief was being blackmailed by the CEO of a security company. But did you actually investigate the CEO at all? Huh? Well, no. I guess not. Accusing a man of blackmail with no proof? I'm not sure what I think of that. Not sure what I think of that? At least I know what I think of you. Hmm, good point. I'm not sure what I think of it myself. You claim the defendant entered the CEO's office, but you'll need at least one witness to corroborate your claim, Mr. Wright. Nick, I think we're going to have to track down the CEO guy. No, we don't have to track down the CEO at all. What do you mean by that, Mr. Trite? There is someone else who can testify. This is the person who can testify that the keycard was used at 1 a.m. that night, Larry! Who is this useless-looking young man? You don't remember him, Your Honor. Hmm, not exactly. But just looking at his picture makes the bile start to rise in my throat. It looks like he doesn't remember the case from two years ago. He probably blocked out that memory on purpose. Anyway, this man was working as a guard at KB Security that night. Oh? The question at hand is, this key card. Yep, that's the key card they used in the building I work. According to the serial number, this one is for the CEO's office. You need it to get into that room, and every time you use that card, it leaves a record. Yeah, it tells you exactly who entered the room and when. You know you're worthless when a wanted poster or your only offer is $500, meanwhile everyone else is worth $10,000. Larry gives me heartburn sometimes, too. He is a weird man. Hmm. As you can see, there's no need to investigate the CEO of KB Security. We should be able to discover the truth simply by analyzing this keycard's data. Darn it, I missed it because I thought it was going to be normal and I was taking a drink of water. But this, this is a weird case. Well, Mr. Godot, the name of the CEO of KB Security is Kang Bullard. I was unable to contact him directly, but... I got the key card data. Here. Should have spat that water out. <laughs> a real life spit take. So, what does it show? Each key card has its own serial number and they leave detailed records of their use. According to this data, this card was used at 1 a.m. on the morning of the crime. Found on Ron's wallet, used on 1 a.m. But that means that Mr. Del it can't be Mr. Delight! Dressed as Mask to Mask in this photo. Ha. Huh. It looks like you're right. Remember to stay hydrated as this just goes off the rails a million times in a row. Two minutes isn't even enough time to brew a good cup of joe. So, so then... Ron Delight was clearly in the office of KB Security CEO at the time of the crime. The prosecutor's office is ready to admit that fact. Therefore, it's impossible for the defendant to be mask to mask. Good job! You did it, Nick! Why is it playing that guy's music now? That's enough! I came perilously close to besmirching the record of an innocent young man. Is it gonna happen again? Is he going to be like, No, you see, there is in Diddly! What's wrong, Your Honor? I'm ready to pass judgment. Before I do that, do you have any further objections? No, Your Honor. Huh. Uh. Very well. The court finds the defendant, Mr. Ron Delight, not guilty. So, this is a case that happened in only one day? Huh. Court is now adjourned. Huh. It's been forever since we had a one-day case. Just one investigation and no death. Yeah. It was the first case without murder. First case in a long time that lasted just a single dude. Ugh. Weird. Nick, you did it. You're right after all. Actually, I'm a little bit ashamed of myself. Nicky boy. Oh, Miss Delight. I knew you could do it. I believed in you all along, Nicky boy. I don't know how I can ever repay you. 
Ah, shucks. Thanks, Miss Delight. I just know I'm blushing. Congratulations, Mr. Nick. Oh, the pearls. Got a bad feeling about this. <gasps> Who is this woman? Oh, she... she's nobody. She's just, uh... You're blushing! How dare you do this in front of Mystic Maya! Why are you so obsessed about this pearl? You should be ashamed of yourself! Did she slap him? Ouch! She slapped me! Um, Pearly? This woman is Miss Desiree Delight. She's our client's wife. <gasps> Mr. Nick! Yes? You're even worse than I thought. Going behind the back of your own client? No! You got it all wrong! I'll never forgive you! She did it again! Ow! A double slap! She's a Pokemon! Well, anyway, all's well that ends well, right? We got the secret urn back and the thief has been caught! You're so right, and it's all thanks to Nicky Boy here. But actually, it was you, Miss Delight, that brought us back our urn! Okay, <laughs> thank you from the bottom of, of my heart! Okay, what is this game's obsession of giving girls big boobs? Like, Maya's the only one who doesn't have that. Granted, I would be very horrified if the game decided to give Pearls some big boobs, and I mean normally, not when she's channeling Mia. That would be horrifying. Oh, please, you're embarrassing me. If we won the case, then why does this guy still look so glum? Uh, but I am the thief. Actually, what's the point now? What is it, honey? I did my best for you, Ronnie. I know that, and I appreciate it, Desi. But the thing is... Come on, give the kid some time. She's just got a little bit of touch of the blues. You know about... Nah. You know about feeling blue, right, amigo? Why are you talking like the cowboy guy from Rise from the Ashes, but you can't be him? Nah, Pearls never grows past 4'8". Now I'm imagining Mia showing up, but just like a tiny mini-me Mia, because she's channeling through Pearls. That would be kind of also weird. There is nothing not weird about Mia possessing Pearls. M Mr. Godot! What are you doing here? Oh, come on. I just came here to say thanks to my newest buddy. You, Mr. Trite. Maybe you should learn my name before you call me buddy. I'm not your buddy, pal. Well, playtime's over. Huh? Early this morning, the body of Kane Bullard was discovered. Kane Bullard? Where have I heard that name before? So now... Now we're going to have to protect our dude from murder charges. Okay, that is actually kind of cool that it's like, Ah, oh, it's the first case without a murder. And then it directly goes into murder. Isn't that the name of the CEO of KB Security? Have I mentioned how much I like this case? It is turning out to be a really cool case. Aside from the at me defense technique, which is just a weird thing to poke at and... Then he is just like, ah, the flash of light. But does that mean that we're going to continue with, like, all of this evidence into the second one? No, it can't be. But maybe? Hmm. Wait, but body? The estimated time of death was 1 a.m. on October 12th. So now we're going to have to prove that he did steal the urn. 1 a.m. on October 12th? You don't mean... That's right, amigo. At the same time that a cheap little urn was being stolen, the CEO of KB Security was being murdered. So then, what are you doing here? Oh, come on. you figured it out already, haven't you, amigo? Or have you already forgotten about that piece of info I helped you out with today? Help me out? What? On October 12th, at 1 o'clock in the morning, Ron Delight was in the CEO's office, the scene of the murder. After getting that blackmail letter, he must have been imbrued with utter rage. But how did Atme know about the blackmail letter after the murder happened? What are you saying? Imbued with rage? 
Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Phoenix pulls out a Glock towards Cadeau. It's right! Learn my name or I will be right! A little bit, but what I usually do when I'm given a choice to ask more questions is uh, ask all the options. Iris should probably do that the same. It's usually just like, aha, I feel like I have gone the right path, and then I got distracted. I got tunnel visioned. Don't even consider whether or not it's relevant or not. I really should keep that in mind for the future. An employee of KB Security? It looks like the alibi that saved him from being convicted as a thief is going to be the noose that gets him hanged kind of an al anti-alibi. I still don't think they could have been able to convict him because the other guy admitted to being the thief and we literally have proof that he took the urn and then put it back together again. No way! He can't be the thief because he was at the murder scene when the murder occurred. No, th that's a lie! It can't be true. Oh, oh, but I, I am a thief, I tell you. Ron Delight, you're going back to prison again. This time the charge is much more serious. This time you'll be tried for murder. What? This can't, this is impossible. I'm looking forward to another exciting showdown, Mr. Trite. You and I aren't through with each other yet. Surely you won't back down from a challenge. You've never been a coward. Mr. Nick, is there something personal? Are you going to ship him with Godot too, Pearl? Really? I've returned from the depths of hell to do battle with you. At least let me have some fun while I'm here. Sky, who the heck is he? I am trying to think, because... It can't be somebody that we know, surely. He may be quiet, but he's the most dangerous enemy I've ever faced. Someday th that look at me is laughing. Someday that say that look at me is laughing maniacally to this day, probably. Well then, time to say goodbye to Mr. Delight. So it's another murder case. Can we just have one case where no one dies? I was going to say technically this one, but no, the murder happened during this case, so... Nick, how could this be happening? Right in front of our very eyes, our client has been arrested for murder. And the one who established his presence at the scene was me. Ah, Ronnie! Arrested for murder on the very same day he's declared innocent of larceny. What the heck's going to happen next? Uh, he is accused of domestic terrorism. That was a... Uh, that was a very interesting case. Never mind, the case isn't over yet. I thought this was going to go on to case three. No, it's just... Okay. No wonder it lasted only one day. Dear God, don't tell me that this is going to be a four, a four investigation day. That would be nuts. I guess we can go a little bit into investigation. Taste the waters, as it were. But we're probably not going to make too much room. But hey, we can give it a shot. You know, I'm glad we found the urn and all, but poor Mr. Delight got arrested again. Well, supposedly Mr. Delight was in the CEO's office when the murder occurred. No, you only have one day left. Oh. And, okay. So it's a double day. One for each case, apparently. No way, Jose. I don't buy it. But the one who proved that Mr. Delight was there was Mr. Nick himself. At least from what I can understand. I mean, technically it is a new case, so the three-day limit resets. And plus it was only, like... <laughs> oh, yeah, because the game respects your time. That is nice that the game is like, okay, we're going to throw a twist in there, but we're not going to go crazy. Looks like you did too good of a job this time, Nick. Um, uh, well, how about we get started looking into the KB security murder? I think I'm going to head back to Kirin Village for a little while, if that's all right. Sure, but why? I'm going to bring the sacred urn back and have some people take a look at it. Ah, that's a good idea. I think I'll go with... 
No, Mystic Maya, you should stay here. I want you two to spend some special quality time together full of love and happiness. Pearl is going to start writing fan fiction at this point. <laughs> but it's just a limit, not condition. Pearls is so caught up in her fantasy she forgot there's a murder to solve. Pearls is adorable and naive. Ain't she, though? Now remember, no fighting, okay? You're the one that was hitting Nick. And she's gone. Okay, Nick, time to get going on this murder investigation. What if Phoenix reveals that he's gay? Can't be. He was dating a murderous monster in the last case. So at li the very least, he's bi. Well, obviously he's not going to be here, so let's investigate. Oh, this place is literally crawling with cops. What did you expect? Now that they know he was actually masked to mask, this must be incredibly embarrassing for them, don't you think? Yeah, I guess they're trying to make up for it by tearing the place apart. Hey, I just noticed. Gumshoe's nowhere to be seen. Well, he is homicide, detective. He's probably working on the murder case. But he was also working on the thieveries. Maybe it was slow murder for a while? Wasn't he in charge of the masked to mask investigation all the way up till yesterday? Well, a murder case is a lot more exciting, isn't it? He'd say something like, there's nothing like a good murder case, pal. Points for the quality of the impression, but I'm not sure Gumshoe has bloodlust, Maya. Now, he may be pansexual, after all. There's a difference between bi and pan. Of which I am a fool, and I do not know the difference, really. Well, let's go to Damask's hideout. Get some information. I love that they're still calling it Damask's hideout, even though he literally isn't. We know this. Oh, Nicky boy, Maya! Miss Delight. All I wanted to do was help my dear Ronnie. Yeah, but I guess it ended up hurting his case. Don't say that, Nick. She doesn't need your help beating herself up. Hey, Nicky boy, please. Please help Ronnie. He's not a killer, I swear. My Ronnie wouldn't hurt a fly. All right, I'll poke around and see what I can find out. Really? Are you serious? Oh, I'm so happy. I knew asking for your help was the right thing to do. I, I don't know what I can do to help anymore. I had no idea Miss Delight had such a vulnerable side. Happy music. So Ronnie received a blackmail letter, huh? Do you think Miss Delight knows about this? Well, if she did, I don't think she would have been smiling like that. I wonder if we should tell her about it. I think it'd be smarter if we didn't. Why? It might give us context. Bisexual is when you like both genders, but have a preference. Pan means you like both genders no matter what. Ha, huh, never heard of it that way. I always thought bi was like, sure, you could lean more way one way or another, but if you liked both, you would be bi no matter what. So I guess it could be that if you're pan, you're also bi, but pan is like the true embodiment of both, maybe. I don't know. I am not a, a magical knower of all. Listen carefully, Nicky boy. My Ronnie would never, ever kill anyone. It's just not in him. I don't think he would either, Nick. Yeah, but you have to admit he's got a bit of a temper to him. It's not that hard to imagine him just snapping and screaming, Please die! He would never say that. Anyway, Mr. Light, he might not be a killer, but he's still going around saying that he's a thief. I already told you, that's just a fantasy for him. Mr. Light, I hate to say it, but you're the one living in a fantasy world. What? How dare you say that to me, Nicky boy? I know everything about my Ronnie. We don't have any secrets between us. So now you know, and knowing is half the battle. G.I. Joe! Ronnie isn't the thieving type. He's so honest that he wouldn't even sneak a nap. He he's so honest that he wouldn't even steal a glance. <laughs> Thief, ha, uh, the very idea. I guess I just don't get it. Huh? Get what? I just can't understand how they can be so different and yet be such a happy couple. Yeah, they sure are different. Come on now, Nicky boy. It's not that mysterious, is it? It was love at first sight. For me, anyway. What? For you? I hate these kinds of people more than anything. Um, you mean ace detectives? No, I'm fine with ace detectives. Oh, so you must mean thieves? No, they're all right, too. I just hate thieves that pretend to be ace detectives. <laughs> There's nothing to hate more than a cowardly men. By the way, why did you go to the Detective Atme's office anyway? 
Well, as the trial went on, I started to get more and more anxious. I went there to try and find out more about the real criminal. The real criminal? Yes, obviously the real Master Mask is not my Ronnie, right? Yeah. And Detective Atme knew more about Master Mask than anyone else. They mentioned him uh, uh, him on the Great People Around Town segment on TV. He's so honest that he makes George Washington lie. I thought it was like, which one was the one that cut down the cherry tree? Well, yeah, that is the thing that he did. Like, I will not tell a lie. I'll just cut down a cherry tree and then I won't lie about it. So then you went there to ask him some questions? And that's right, I'll do whatever it takes to save my man. The secretary said the ace detective is an in right now. He had a secretary? But I forced my way past her and into his hideout. I wouldn't exactly call that office his, of his a uh, hideout. That bag was sitting right there on top of the table. Yeah, indeed it was. Well, yeah, we saw the bag there yesterday too. There's nothing lower than someone who would try to pin a crime on someone else. Mr. Light, do you know about KB Security? Don't be silly, of course I do. That's where Ronnie works. She thinks he still works there, huh? And yet, according to what we heard yesterday... Come on, don't tell me you didn't know. Ron Delight was once an employee of KB Security. He was a professional security guard. Ron quit. He doesn't work there anymore. Also, if Debbie is a motorcyclist, why isn't there a bike helmets in the apartment? Well, she has goggles, so I'm going to assume she's one of those people that's like, I'm not gonna wear any helmets. I'm gonna go fast. It looks like Mr. Light doesn't know. KB Security is only about 20 minutes away by motorcycle, that is. Larry told me it takes 30 minutes by car. Well, I have to admit, I tend to fly pretty fast on my bike. To make it to KB Security that fast, are you sure you aren't literally flying? Why else w Why don't I give you a ride sometime, or better yet, how about now? Um, uh, no, I'll pass. Thanks. That would cause Pearl to murder Nick. <laughs> she goes down with the ship. Why don't you just tell us where it is and we'll go ourselves? <laughs> what a scaredy cat you are, Nick. Mr. Light told us the location of KB Security. Okay, that's over there right away, Nick. But we still have to do Love at First Sight. Um, so was it really Love at First Sight when you first met Mr. Delight? Well, maybe not at first sight, but Ronnie saved my life. Saved your life? I was at work one day when two robbers suddenly rushed in. <laughs> well, I'm not the kind to just curl up into a little ball in a corner, so I fought back. Also, those earrings wouldn't be practical for a motorcyclist. <laughs> yeah, they do seem a bit big. Even if they... Like, they would just get in the way with air, like, flinging them around. They'd rip your ear off. R robbers? Yes, they took me hostage. I was so frightened. They were both carrying these huge knives, and I broke down into tears. Yeah, glad to finally join another stream, and thank you for joining me, YouTube chat. We're decently into it. We're learning more about this twisty twist of a case. I would, too, if I were in that situation. Oh, I think I get it. Did Mr. Light come running in to save you? Yes, exactly. I remember he looked so handsome in that guard uniform of his. He went right up to those two knife-wielding robbers and screamed in their faces. Why do they look so horrified? What did he do? <laughs> I'm back on YouTube because I forgot my Twitch account, but it'll be cool either way. <laughs> That's almost... I, lo I hate it when that happens, when I forget to access to my accounts on something. It's evil. Please, stop it! He screamed. I could see the robbers' faces turn pale. Why are they so scared? Also, since Maya's 18 now, I wouldn't be surprised if he dated Maya. Considering how the games have kind of pointed in that direction, I too would also not be surprised. This is one of the better side cases in my opinion. I even made it through the first trial without having to reload a save, which by this game's standards is a lot for me. Yeah. That high-pitched shriek of his does have a surprisingly strong effect on people. I still love the second robber's just horrified expression. It's like he's gonna break down in tears. Then crying and swinging in his arms like crazy attack the two robbers. 
All by himself. He came to save me. A total stranger. All by himself. He was so scared that he was crying and shaking, but he still risked his life for me. Wow, that's a great story. Yes, you may not look it, but in a tough situation, there's no one better. That's why I fell in love with him like I did. <laughs> that's so romantic. I'd fall in love too, I guess. Nick, I hope you'll do the same for me if I ever get taken hostage. With Maya, that possibility always seems to loom in the not-so-distant future. She does seem to get herself into situations, doesn't she? I know the game said no, but my bard is telling me yes. Do you know about this? Oh, is that a letter addressed to my Ronnie? Sorry, but I hate it when people poke their noses in other people's business. I'm a lawyer! The second robber looks like he saw some demon and just crapped the floor. Foreshadowing. Oh no. <laughs> is Maya going to be taken hostage in this game? She was already taken hostage last game! By Shelly the Killer! Yeah. As for me, I recently finished Ace Attorney Investigations 2, probably a top three game. And I love the returns of Regina, Ron, and best of all, Frank Sawit. The tutorial guy comes back in the in the first in, in like the last remaining Japanese only Ace Attorney game? That's hilarious. That has to be like years after the first one. Amazing. Which means she has no idea that her husband was being blackmailed. Well, you wouldn't be surprised if she was, though. I will honestly be surprised if Maya doesn't get involved. Then again, technically, technically speaking, Maya is kind of involved in this case because her urn kind of revolved around everything. She just wasn't on trial. It was a 10th anniversary thing. Yeah, it's not an Ace Attorney game if Maya's life isn't in danger. Yep. Well, first things first, let's go to Detention Center. I already told you! It's not me! A sad, pitiful whine like that tapers into silence. Sounds like they're interrogating Mr. Delight right now. Man, and we don't have enough time as it is. Yeah, well, I guess the police are going crazy just like we are. Yesterday they thought he was just a thief, but now they've got a murder case on their hands. I guess you're right. That guard over there does look a bit on edge, too. He hasn't changed since the first game, Maya. He may as well be a mannequin. Come on, we'll just have to come back later. Okay, let's go check out some other place, Nick. I wonder if Maya gets teased a lot for going, getting accused for murder so much. She literally thought she was guilty of murder in the last game. Well, let's go to the main exhibition hall, then. The treasures of Kirin exhibit is all ruined now. Maya, I'm sorry, it's just so sad. This is our big chance for everyone to learn about spirit channeling. Maybe I can cheer her up somehow. Well, now that we've got the sacred urn back, maybe they can reopen it. Really? Sure, maybe we can label it the urn of Mask Damask's desires. That'd probably attract a lot of attention. Whoa, whoa, whoa! That's brilliant, Nick! We could clean up and be filthy rich! Woohoo! Wow, that was surprisingly easy. Well, let's go to the basement, just because we can. Because we never did tie it to the paint. Oh, it's you, Mr. Wright! Miss Andrews, what's she still hanging around down here for? Um, so, how's it going? What about the sacred urn? The urn? It, oh, that. It's been taken care of already. What do you mean, oh, that? Taken care of? Do you mean it's been found? Spirit channeling is literally ghost possess you as a job. But only if you have specific genetics. Huh. Maybe Godot is Cyclops and there are mutants in this world. Yes. It was brought in during the trial today. Wow, really? You really are the greatest, Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright had nothing to do with it. It was Master Mask's wife that found it. Well, anyway, I'm so relieved. I just heard all about it on the news. So that detective was actually the thief all along. It looks that way right now. It's my fault. I'm the one who ended up hiring Damask to guard the treasures. 
Don't blame yourself. You were just doing your job. Hey, Nick, if she wants to apologize, you should let her. So, when was that you hired Detective at me again? About 20 days ago. And when was that master mask calling card arrived? It was about 10 days ago. So he sent a calling card to the very place he was hired to guard. I guess that's it then. Detective Atme must have really wanted the Sacred Urn after all. But I'm just trying to think. I love that Phoenix doesn't correct Mai when she says Master Mask's wife. <laughs> but one thing that is still rattling in my head is something odd that Atme said. Because he said at some point, Mask to Mask's third thievery. Which feels wrong. I feel like there's more twists, but we'll have to get there. I guess so. What? So Master Mask murdered someone as well? Well, that's how things look right now. Yes, but I thought that he was here stealing the urn at the time. Well, we're talking about a criminal mastermind, so anything is possible. Nick, let's get down to business already. On the night of the theft, did you notice anything suspicious about Detective Atme? No, I couldn't have. After all, he was hidden in the entire time. I never even caught a glimpse of him. He claims that it's that's the way he always operates. That's just what he says so he can have an alibi while he commits the thefts himself. Yeah, he was caught up in the crime scene photo dressed up as Master Mask pretty well. But still, how did he fight himself and the brooch come off? What the da 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 I'm so glad that you got the Sacred Urn back. Yes, but there's still something about it that bothers me. W what is it? I'm not exactly sure, but somehow the urn that came back seems different. N really? You wouldn't know anything about that, would you, Miss Andrews? N no, I don't know anything! Why would I? Why are you acting weird, Andrews? What's the matter with you? Whoa! What? <laughs> Alright, while well, you're taken off guard by unlikely Cyclops, remember to stay hydrated. Uh. Cyclops, and I know they're technically pronounced Psyche, but... What do you think this means, Nick? It means the person that holds the secret to the mystery of the Sacred Urn. Those are our very own Miss Andrews. Well, let's talk over everything again. Pathetic looking wooden box. She made it. Why not? Don't, don't, what do you mean? Why don't you mean the don't touch it? That case is over. The case is over. Yes, yes, it's a ladder. It's the same conversation. Oh, my brain. I thought my I was just on autopilot there. Apologies. Because it turned out that Atme was the real thief. It's still hard to believe. It looks like Adrian feels really bad about it. I'm going to take full responsibility and fix the sword myself. I know I don't look it, but I have complete confidence that I can fix it right up. I promise I'll fix it so you'll never know it was bent in the first place. But please be gentle with it. <laughs> please do not destroy our sacred fancy sword. Looks to me like it's been dry for several days. Something suspicious about this paint mark. Yeah, because that's where the box was. Statue when first came here, it was moved. This is all reused, but... So does, does Phoenix see the locks physically, or does he have a feeling? You know, I don't think we are ever made aware of that. I guess one thing that we can do is, like, check and see what the Cyclops say. And at least see what it wants out of us. It's two, so it'll be hard, but let's see. Miss Andrews, do you know anything about the Sacred Urn? Th do I know anything? I'm in charge of the entire treasure exhibit! The urn that was submitted before the court today. It's obviously not the same urn as before. Well, that's... that's, um, true. Maybe it isn't the same. It could be... it could be a fake. A fake? 
You're the one who said it. It wasn't the same, so that's the most obvious explanation. Pretty sure Phoenix mentions the specific color of the Cyclops at one point. Hmm. Okay, got back onto Twitch. Haha. <laughs> Do you have any evidence that uh, Earn submitted was the truly genuine? Hmm. This is the closest thing I can think of. Nope. Do you have any evidence that was submitted at the trial? But do you have any evidence the urn does really mention them? I recall he mentions a cold, dark feeling. Maybe it's like different times. Hmm. I guess we don't have anything that specifically notes. Hmm. Ah, the color of the Cyclops are mentioned in the fifth Ace Attorney game. Well, let's go to the CEO's office. The fucking dude was smacked into the fucking... Ooh. Harsh. So I guess this is where it all went down, huh? The walls here look thick, just like you'd expect in a CEO's office. What has that got to do with anything? Hey, it's you guys! Oh, it's Detective Gumshoe. Today was a real train wreck for you guys, huh? Sure was, pal. The prosecutor made real fools out of us. I was thinking of A4, DD, and SOJ are the only two I haven't played yet. <laughs> yeah, I see a I, I feel sorry for you. Well, that's not like you at all. I thought you'd be more like, Oh, that was great! You guys got what you deserve, pal! <laughs> or something to that effect. The boy really sound like that to you, pal? Oh yeah, I keep forgetting that Nick still has the Megatama. You get an explanation of what Black Cyclops are in 5-5. Five five. That sounds ominous! If the gumshoe fits. Um, well anyway. The point is I can tell when someone puts their heart into their jobs. And I can sympathize when things don't go your way. Sometimes I feel like wrong is the only way things go for us detectives. Wow, I had no idea Detective Gumshoe was such a nice guy. He has been helping- HE GOT INTO A CAR WRECK FOR YOU! HE GOT INTO A CAR WRECK FOR YOU, MAYA! He broke his body and his soul! Now this little love fest is over, maybe we can start investigating. Detective Gumshoe, tell us what you know about the murder. I'm just waiting for the newly announced trilogy because I don't like playing games on my phone. So I won't play them yet, but eventually. That's a mood. The new Apollo games? Well, new, but the, the Apollo collection? That's super cool. Could play it on an emulator, but it's becoming official, so it's super cool. <laughs> Um, okay, but the thing is, I'm really not supposed to. Hey, come on. What about how we put our hearts into our work? Things are really working against us right now, and we need help. Hopefully they include the DLC cases. Oh, yeah. The later games were liable for DLC. I would assume so. I did use DS Mumi for AC Attorney Investigations 2, so considering it, the DLC case for Dual Destinies is excellent. And they better well put it in there. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. Just don't start crying on me, okay, pal? Okay, I won't cry on you, pal. <laughs> I love that they keep saying pal back and forth. The victim's name is Kane Bullard. He was the CEO of KB Security and a pretty big fella in his own right. His corpse was discovered at 9 this morning. His estimated time of death was 1 in the morning on October 12th. Cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. Probably an object in this room. Still, uh, still I'm playing Danganronpa 2 at the moment, so I'll wait either way. I need to eventually get into the Danganronpa games. They look very interesting. It happened at exactly the same time that Mask to Mask was stealing the urn, huh? Autopsy report. Cerebral hemorrhaging from blunt trauma. So why did it take almost an entire day to discover the body? There's a good explanation for that one. Bullard's body was stashed away inside that safe. Safe? Well, it's, it's pretty big. Nobody had heard from him, and when they opened the safe this morning, out he came. Oh, so the body fell out. 
That white string must be the shape from when he fell out. I think we still need some information about Mr. Bullard. Maybe you could start by getting his... Oh, she, she said billiard, didn't she? So, um... What happened to Master Mask? He's at the detention center screaming like a madman. Investigate me again! He keeps yelling. Ah, uh, no, no, I didn't mean him. He's not the real thief anyways, right? Oh, you mean that detective at me? <laughs> oh, that was great! That guy got what he deserved! <laughs> now that's the detective I know and love. Think about it. Atme was always around when a calling card showed up. But he always mysteriously disappeared when the heist took place. I was hiding at the crime scene. <laughs> yeah, right. That's the lamest thing I've ever heard. That's how you just knew he was the thief. I would explain how he was able to retrieve the stolen item he keeps bragging about. Yeah, he just did it that to make himself look like a great detective, that's all. But there's one thing I can't figure out about his first heist. His first heist? Yeah, the Tear of Imanon case. There was a witness on that one. I will also add that ex explicitly saying Black Cyclops was Yamazaki's vision while introducing the idea. Was talking. Oh. Was Yakum Yamazaki's vision while introducing the idea was Takumi's. Eh, interesting. A witness? Yeah, I saved the newspaper clipping. Since the thief is already under arrest, you guys can keep it. Also, I for one, uh, I one of the cases in Spirit of Justice. It's revealed the murder was actually a suicide. That is a spoiler. So officially, it's canon that Phoenix sees the color, but I don't know if it was meant to be. That is interesting. Hey, this guard here. I haven't seen him. So haven't we seen, seen him somewhere before? He's pretty small, so it's kind of hard to see, but now that she mentions it... Huh. Now I want to take a look at that. What do you mean that we saw that guy before? The gym and the thief stolen. The precious gym. The tear of him and on. Priceless. I don't think we've seen the officer back there before. Hmm. Don't think so, at least. Ooh, that prosecutor! I really don't like that guy. We used our own evidence to do that... Uh, to do that to Mr. Delight. Yeah, I think he did that way just because he knew it hurt more. That was what my gut tells me, anyway. So who is that Java-addicted masked maniac, anyway? Prosecutor Cadol? He's quite the enigma, huh? The thing is, pal, I'd never even heard of the guy before. He just showed up one day at the prosecutor's office. Came out of nowhere. That's right, he said this was his first case as a prosecutor. And it's true, according to the records, anyway. But, no way he's an amateur. He's a nice man in court and a maverick that gives me goosebumps. I'm just so glad I played Justice for All before I started going online and spoiling everything for myself. Especially, like, the funny thing is, for, like, a lot of the stuff I hear about Phoenix Wright, a lot of the time, it's just really out of context things, like the parrot. So, at least, like, I haven't really been spoiled aside from this chat all that much. Goosebumps? You? Yeah, I knew something was up about him, so I asked around. Also, at some point, does Phoenix... Like, interrogate a whale or a dolphin or something? I think that happens in one of the later games. I saw a screenshot. Nobody would talk to me. They all just turn the other way. Poor Detective Gumshoe. I had no idea you were so unpopular. Uh, no. That's not what I meant. That Cadeau guy acts like he knows me and has a grudge against me. I get the feeling he's hiding some kind of dark secret. That may or may not be from a case I said was excellent. So, so it's the DLC case. So let's investigate. Wow, look at that huge framed photo. Tall mountains rising majestically against a dark and cloudy sky. There's a title written on the bottom of the photo. The greatest sunrise of my life. And this is it? That, this was his best sunrise? I haven't been spoiled at all when I marathon the entire attorney series, and I'm very thankful for it. Maybe if he had lived a little longer, he would have seen some better days. Harsh. This rope, you think it fell out the safe when it was opened? I don't think so. So you mean, 
Yeah, I think the string shows where and how the corpse is lying. Luckily, I have not for Danganronpa 2 or V3. I think I have, like, a kind of spoiler for V3, but it's a weird spoiler that's more of a... I don't know how to word it. It's not like any of the specific, like, things that actually happen in the game, I think. It's more like about the ending overall. But that was, like, a long time ago, so I could have just made it up. Or I could have been lied to! Who knows? You mean the victim... He was killed by being crushed by the safe door? She, she can't be serious, can she? Maya is insane. Ew, think about it. A dead guy was lying in here all night. Yeah. Oh, by the way, don't bother asking about fingerprints. There were none. Well, somebody opened the safe on the night of the crime, right? Yeah, and so? Well, if Mr. Bullard's body was hidden in there, it must mean that it was opened by either the killer or the victim, right? He got Wily Coyotes. That'd be... He was killed by a toon. Um, yeah, I guess so. <laughs> I got some bad news for you, pal. Are you ready? Um, okay, shoot. Opening this baby is no piece of cake. There are only a few people who know how to open this safe, pal. Yeah, and? Everyone that knows how to open the safe had airtight alibis. I checked. Everyone except one... That is, I'm almost afraid to ask. Former security chief Ron Delight. What? He was the security chief? Ron? So he knew how to open the safe, huh? Yeah, sorry for raining on your parade there, pal. This must be the CEO's desk. It has a, it's a lot simpler than I thought it would be. Hey, that looks like a super soft chair. Let me try it out, just for a second. Ooh, nice. I feel like just a CEO. Hey, you, whip me up a cup of some really expensive import tea and some scones. Move it. Ah, this is the life. Um, the victim sat in that chair just before he was brutally killed, you know. <laughs> that's how they get you. And that's <laughs> why we have a scene of my spinning in a chair in the anime. Adorable. Ooh, there's a button here. Let's see. Hey, cut it out! Don't press that! <laughs> that was pretty funny. I never knew Detective Gumshoe could jump like that. Where's that button anyway? It's an emergency buzzer! It says right on there in the panel! Oops, you're right. It's written right there. Nick, how many times have I told you to read the instructions first? This alarm's connected to the basement guard room. It's used to summon security up here. Really? But it's possible on the night of the crime. Ooh, so when the CEO was attacked, do you think that maybe he pressed the buzzer? Yeah, I thought about that, so I asked around down there, but they said that the buzzer never went off that night. Also, we couldn't find any fingerprints on the buzzer. Mr. Buller, the victim, wasn't wearing any gloves, so, by the way, just so you know. Huh, I think we better go and talk to that guard about this emergency buzzer. Interesting. And people have actually experimented and found buyers would refuse to buy a good, inexpensive house if they're told a murder was connected to it. And then there's Europe, where, well, then again, I think that's... There are people that are weird about people dying in homes, and then there are, like, ones who are like, Oh, somebody just died of old age here? Sure. And then there are people that are, like, freaked out over specifically murders. This looks like some kind of bookshelf rolling cabinet hybrid. Mmm, I can't get between these two shelves! Don't strain yourself trying. It looks like the shelves are controlled by a special panel. So I guess it's one shelf at a time, huh? Looks like they're filled with a bunch of files. Yeah, files filled with data about security jobs they were hired to handle. It'd be a good night's reading if you got insomnia. I was hoping for something a little bit more exciting, like UFOs or something. Check out this big, thick binder here. Leave the heavy lifting to me, Nick. Reading a file isn't exactly backbreaking work, just a little hard on the eyes. Ah! W what did you find out, Nick? This file. It's not any about any sort of security operations or anything. This huge file is all about mask to mask. It's filled with info on him. What? What kind of info? It's filled with incredibly detailed info about his methods and the crime scenes. Hey, Nick, look at the last page. It's a list. Let's see. Tier of Eminon, 100,000. This looks like a list of all the treasures that Mask to Mask stole. 
So then a hundred thousand... Let me guess. That's Ron Delight back there, huh? So then a hundred thousand dollars is the value of the stolen item? I don't know. That number sounds kind of low to me. I think I'd better secretly make a copy of this list. That is very odd. Tear of Eminem. Crown of Bongora. Left Hand of Hades. Portrait of Majima. Hmm. Could it be that Ron is so delusional that he does think that he... Okay, my brain... Uh, <laughs> why Why are the walls of this place shaped like circuit boards? But back to my thought. Could it be that Ron is so delusional that he actually does think that he's mask to mask? And then could it be that Luke at me worked alongside this company... To fleece Ron? But how would he get the money? Huh. I don't know. It's very odd. I don't think there's anything else. Interesting thought. Because how would Ron get the money? And also, why would the number go down? Because if we look at the evidence here... The number just keeps going up. But then also the portrait of Magina was returned by Diddly D. The portrait was returned by Luke at me for a reward. Hmm. Something very weird is going on. Is there anything else that I'm missing? Oh, wait, the game did kind of push me in the direction of the security room. All right, weirdness. Wow, this is really something else. For security guard office, it sure doesn't look feel very secure. KB security guard. Oh, I just remembered. Larry might be... Hey, Nick, what's up? Uh, so he is here. Yo! How's it hanging, dude? And you got my sweet little Maya with you, too. There's the heartburn. Hi, Larry. Ooh, here I was, working my fingers to the bone. And it walks an angel! I've got no problems with a daytime date. It's all good! No, that's not what we're here for. We're investigating the Bullard murder case. Huh? Oh, yeah! That's right. You're a lawyer, aren't you? He's so hopelessly clueless. Well, if it's about the murder case... Well, if it's about the murder case, boy, have I got some good info for you. Fuck my life, it's Larry. You suck, Larry. I don't mind him too much, but maybe he's just very bad. <laughs> Later on. The bad definitely outweighs the good for me. Another day, another instance of Larry's life getting more and more tragic. Really? What is it? Hmm, well, I don't mind sharing with my sweet little Maya, but Nick here is a different story. But Larry, I thought you two were old school buddies. That was then and this is now. He feels like a psychopath. So what's this good info you were talking about, Larry? Hey, I'm a guard, a pro. I can't just give away information for free. He wants a bribe? I thought professionals were more, I don't know, honest? Can you talk to him, Maya? Larry, tell us already. What's this good info? Hey, I like that this kitten has got some claws. Okay, you really want to know? Yes, yes, tell me! Okay, so the thing is, Ron Delight was an employee here. And naturally, since I'm a pro, I looked into his background. Follow me? Yes, you're a pro. I follow you. Go on! Well, one year ago, Ron Delight was fired. And there was no warning at all. It just happened all of a sudden. One year ago. And then six months ago, like five or six months ago, started the... the the, the crimes of Damask. He just gets a bit flanderized in later games, especially in the Turnabout of Blaze, where you have to spend an hour proving he... I won't spoil it if you ask me to. So, we're basically gonna have to... 
So not only do we kind of retread having to defend Larry, but we have to spend a longer time defending him the second time around than the first time we did. And he's probably been flanderized to hell. Investigations 1 finale. Oh boy. What agony is await me. It just happened so sudden. I know this is a small company, but I think that was pretty awful. I guess he must have done something bad to have gotten fired like that. Like maybe skipping out on work to go pick up hot chicks or something. No, that's just you. So what is it you like to be a part-time So what is it like to be a part-time security guard? Let me tell you, it's tough. Well, you know me, I get by all right, I guess. First I have to keep my eye on those monitors all the time. Monitors? There are security cameras set in each room around the building. It's really hard. Sometimes I feel my eyes are gonna fall out. Oh. And if I see something suspicious, I have to contact one of the teams. What teams? The security teams for this company. They're supposedly the best in the business. But I'm no amateur either, so if it's something small, I don't bother calling them. So in other words, you basically watch TV screens all day. I still like the kidnap turnaround, turnabout despite what anyone says. Well, I can't wait to get to that one as well. Because, like, I, I don't mind the circus. The circus case. And I hear that a lot of people are very split on it. But I really like the circus case. The characters are nice in that one. Even if it is kind of weird that both Max Galactica and the Puppet Man Trilo won it at Regina. That's a little squicky. But otherwise, it's a perfectly fine case. I actually like the circus case, too. Except of the love triangle. <laughs> hey! We agree on that. You were in this office when the murder took place, weren't you? L why do you say that? This is just a part-time job for me, and I can't operate the equipment, and I'm dumb! Even if it is a part-time and you are dumb, you're still in charge of security here. Hey, give me a break! Don't try to pin the whole thing on me! That's not fair, Nick! Huh? I don't think... You can expect someone like him to take any responsibility. Anyway, the point is you were here that night, right? Motherfucker. <laughs> the anime version of Big Top is infinitely better than the game. Interesting. I love the characters in the circus case. It was just a bit hard and the murder method was a bit contrived. True. They completely removed the love triangle in the anime. Ha! Ah. Oh no, I knew something smelled bad and it was the butts after all. Well, it's like I always say, that was then and this is now, okay? It feels like I'm going to have to break his Cyclops after all. Well, let's examine. What's this? That's my partner's seat. Your partner? Well, that's what I call her. She's my superior, actually. Kind of weird old lady. Don't you dare. Um, there's tea spilled all over that machine, you know. Oh, don't worry about it. Just the other day, I spilled some chocolate milk on mine. It still works fine, more or less. They really know how to build them, I guess. Don't you dare. Don't bring her in. <laughs> Not the Wicked Witch of the Witness Stand. <laughs> I like the Justice for All because it shows Phoenix as his lowest and hardest moments. I could see your PTSD flaring up. It's mostly because I don't remember how to do her voice. It fluctuates all the time. Something's written on this poster in fine print. A guard's five commandments. Wow, this sounds serious. Let's see what it says. Number one, obey thy superior. Respect thy superior. Smile at thy superior. Salute thy superior. Buy donuts for thy superior upon command. It's not- ah! The horror. Is she gonna show up? I don't know. Mm. She's one tough old bird, let me tell you. Cross her and you come face to face with a real genuine ray gun. Yeah, sounds scary, all right. Well, fortunately, she's on vacation. That's why I'm so relaxed right now. Good. <laughs> I was so relieved. They, they threatened you with it, but then they pulled back. Hey, Larry, that's your jacket, isn't it? That's right. Um, did you know you hung it right on top of some kind of lever? Yeah, sure, I was told to never ever touch that lever. She scowled and huffed at me. Something terrible will happen if you do. Got it, Greenhorn? 
So why hang your jacket on such an important lever? Because it got me curious. If the jacket's weight pulls the lever down, that's what they call an accident. Doesn't the suspense just kill you? Don't you want to know it'll happen, huh? She's not in this game, for the most part. Unless you plan on playing Investigations 1. I do plan on doing that eventually. It's true, it's killing me too. What about you, Nick? Yeah, but for a different reason. Wow, take a look at these things here. Hey, hey, Larry, what are they? Uh, did you say, hmm? Hey, man, it's not like I have to know what they are to do my job. I, I always thought they were just some kind of decoration or something. Oh, boy. Even Maya can see where things are going. She's in the epilogue. I guess that's a fitting place for her. I'd pay uh, to watch Neon play Investigations 1. I will get to it eventually, and even Investigations 2. I think I already have a translated ROM of it. How did this guy ever get a job here? I'm honestly surprised that he's not the one accused of the murder. He feels like a patsy. That's my workstation. Pretty cool, huh? I'd pray a great deal to watch Neon play the Investigations duology. And it shall happen eventually. Sometime. I just want to stagger my releases so I don't burn myself out on Ace Attorney. So I'll just, like, play game and then eventually I'll be like, I'm in the mood for Ace Attorney. Man, just play the entire series. That's kind of how we're going for it. I'm not sure when I'll play the great Ace Attorney, but at some point. And then, of course, I'll have to get the Ap Apollo collection that comes out. I keep a steady eye on the monitors and use that mic for communication. Look at all this equipment. It must be hard to operate. Ah, eh, no biggie. I think there's an instruction manual somewhere in this room. Somewhere? Instruction manual? What are you do going to do in an emergency? Well, I guess I'd start by calmly looking for the instruction manual. During that time, my partner, the old lady, would calmly look for her reading glasses. That's what us security professionals call teamwork. Even my and Pearls could run this place better. Hey, what's that supposed to mean? Is she literally psychic? Man, just... It only took me eight months to finish all the games. Yeah, take it slow. I know I will. What about Professor Layton and the Phoenix Wright crossover? That is another one that I eventually want to get to. But I want to play, like, an original uh, Professor Layton game first. Kind of get to a point where they both converge. It'll have taken me two years. Yeah. The screens here show the what's going on all over the building, everywhere. And it's my job to keep a steady eye on all of them. I wouldn't sound so smug if I were you. Can you watch regular TV on those two? If anyone would sit here and watch TV instead of working, it's Larry. Hey, Maya, I'm a pro, okay? Besides, you can't get regular TV on it. And how do you know that, Larry? Because that was my first bit of investigation, if you know what I mean. I know what you're thinking! It was a professional investigation, all right? Pretty sure the game is non-canon for both series. But still, I want to, like... Considering that it's a crossover, I want to know, like... What goes into both of them. So I, I know what, like, Ace Attorney is like. But I also want to know what some Professor Slayton is like. So I can, like... Get a feel of it. That's pretty solid. It's got some voice acting, too. Oh, no! They're taking my job! My job of reading video game dialogue. Hmm. Well, we can at least take a look at what his Cyclops are like. On the night of the crime, were you working hard like you were supposed to? What? Huh? Uh, of course I was! Why wouldn't I have been? Nah, it's only 20% voice acted. They took away 20% of my job. And I really want to see someone make the same fatal mistake I did in the unspeakable story so I can feel validated to make fun of them on stream. Oh no. That Well, I'll just have to see. Will I avoid horrific failure? Or will I become the fool? But didn't you sneak out of work just yesterday to go see Miss Delight? Uh, but that was that, and this is this. Is there any chance that you snuck out... Excuse me? Snuck out of work last night, too. Never! I didn't sneak out. I tell you what, I'll even bet you a dollar. 
A dollar. Wow, now that's confidence. What did that drenched in the rain puppy look on your face? Do you have any evidence that I left my position or are you just pulling my chain? The evidence that Larry was not manning the station when the murder happened is... I don't think we have one. Because... Hmm. Yeah, because this was found later, so we don't think we have anything. You should whisper to me that fiddle mistake so I can remember. So that everyone can wait with bated breath, waiting for my fatal mistake to arise. Hmm. Yeah, because I don't think I have the necessary things. Because he wouldn't have found the card and stuff. Actually, that is kind of interesting. Hmm. Her. Her. Maybe... Um, so about this. Huh? What's that? Hey, wait a minute, Maya! What's wrong? Copy that data without permission. Don't show it to him. He might get mad at us. So, what are you two whispering about? Er, oh, it's nothing. It's just my billfold. That's a pretty thick billfold you got there, pal. I really want you to show it to me. Sorry, it's hard to believe, but there's a limit to how much my brain can hold. I got two ears and two eyes, but I only got one brain. I can see your eyes and the ears, but the jury's still out on the brain. They named the cases weird in Great Ace Attorney. <laughs> it was only one penalty, but reading the fifth highest comment on this thread will reveal what it was. Oh, sorry, links are blocked because my brain is paranoid. And also, like, there was a period of time where I got a ton of bots. They're like, hey, would you like to buy watchers and some followers? Come to this here scam site. That, like, happened once a stream for a period of months. <laughs> But I don't think I have, because we need evidence that proves that it's not the original. Well, let's look over everything. Here, that's what, uh, that's what he said, and yet he's still... I guess he was not as smart as he pretended to be. The camera belonged to Lordly Taylor, so he knew he couldn't tamper with it. So when it, why would at me, I mean, mask to mask, allow that to happen? Because he has an ego. Argani. The mess. He'll ride it home. Harsh. So the door is extra storeroom. Stuff back there. Remember Maya? I'm essentially said we're not supposed to go down there. Hmm. Because I obviously need more proof. Hamburger, spaghetti. Hmm. Hmm. The treasure of curate exhibit was my first job after last year's ordeal, and I really wanted to be a success. I've got an idea. Why don't you redo the whole poster? You could put something like "Voted Best Treasure Exhibit by Mask to Mask." I think I know what you're stuck on. Why, Maya, that's a fantastic idea. So I'm just trying to think. Find out by something shiny and gold. That's why I went to the trouble borrowing it from Brent's family. A gold statue is totally cool in my book. It arrived rather late, so I wouldn't be able to put it on display. By the way, it looks like the statue was moved on the night of the theft. Do you know anything about that? Uh huh? No, it certainly wasn't me that moved it. Why is she so flustered all of a sudden? I was stuck for, on this investigation for a bit, too. Oh, yeah, I've read a lot of comments for people who were stuck on it. Oh, boy! I took a close look at it on the day after the theft. The timestamp on the photo is definitely real. That's good to know. Detective Atme said he got hit on the back of the head. It was obviously a lie. 
Because it turned out that at me was a real thief. It's hard to believe. I'm gonna take a flow. Okay, we already went through this. Hmm. Trying to think. Because we have two Cyclops we need to break. Well, technically four, but two people. We need proof that the urn changed. Oh, I've got to keep a guide for investigations. I heard Detective Club before we even received the call. I suppose that was a mistake. At me, I mean Master Mask. He sent a calling card to the very exhibit he was hurt to guard. Yeah, we... Yes, we would have known he could have easily become a suspect. Hmm. Trying to think. Oh, because I didn't do it properly. I am Le Fool. Oh, yeah, we already went through that. Hmm. Considering that we didn't find anything, I guess we can go back and, I guess, like, uh, go to. Like, uh, could you still interact with Gumshoe? I think we used up everything there. Because, like, we looked over everything both here and in the security room, so... I assume that we have what we need, at least partially. We, we can save Scum a little bit. Then again, man. So we got stuck on the, uh... FMT first investigation, but I luckily developed a habit of presenting every obtained item to a person I obtained it from. Did you present Kane's profile to Gumshoe? No, I did not. I guess... I keep forgetting, because it's normally not that uh, much of a thing. I hated when I got stuck on Rise of the Ashes because I missed one blood stain. That is always annoying. Detective Gumshoe, tell us more about Mr. Shane Bluebard. That's Kane Bullard, not Shane Bluebard, pal. Oh, yeah. The victim in this case just doesn't make much of an impression on me. Well, you were... Well, you were the uh, the victim up until Mr. Bullard was found dead. Yeah, and his body wasn't discovered until this morning. Anyway, we don't have enough information yet. Can you help us out? Sorry, but I'm actually a little confused myself. For some reason, I'm just blabbering like an idiot right now. Okay, Nick, now is our chance to get more info about the victim, so hurry up and ask. <laughs> okay, blabber like an idiot, my man. Can you tell us some more about Mr. Bullard? He was the CEO of KB Security, right? What kind of company is it anyway? Well, the company basically sends security teams out to buildings to guard them. Mr. Bullard must have had the chance to learn a lot of secrets doing this kind of work. Oh, and? And I don't know how to put this, pal, but the guy was kind of a money grubber. Really? Me too. I just love money. I can't ever get enough. Please stop leaning in towards me like that. You aren't getting to my wallet. <laughs> Took me a long time to realize KB and KB Security stands for Kane Bullard. Huh. My brain was stuck going, hey, that's close to being KGB. Because my brain is weird. Anyway, it looks like he did some pretty shifty stuff to earn his millions. Oh, so that's my problem. I need to be a shiftier. Let me... Let me go already. Apparently, he was involved in selling trade secrets between rival companies. Ooh, that's pretty dirty and underhanded. Yeah. Oh, KB Security used to head security operations against Mask to Mask. What? Really? Yeah. And after screwing up so many times, the company's reputation really took a nosedive. So it really was Bullard who sent Ron the blackmail letter, huh? My initials are KB, and I'm uninteresting, so I relate to Kane Bullard the most of any character. Man, most of the name uh, jokes I completely miss, especially the people in Spirit of Justice. Is it bad that I missed the pun and Luke at me for three whole days? Meanwhile, that's the only pun that I got out of this game so far, I think. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll go to the security room and present Bullard to you as well. Hey, Nick, I told you I'm a pro, and I don't... And you don't interrupt a pro when he's working, so he doesn't care about his boss's face. That's actually one of the few names I got immediately. Hmm. What if we handed him the autopsy? 
Yeah. Nope, he cares not. Barry Caden from T uh, Great Ace Attorney 2 tripped me up for a while. Barricade. <laughs> I had to think for a moment. He's like, what is that? So he really doesn't care. Uh, I guess we can try. Because... Maybe we can present the wallet? But, mm, eh, we can do it. We can save scum. The psych blocks are weird. We can burl on down to the... Enemy side. And a lot of names in The Greatest Attorney 2 are actually spoiled from literature rather than puns. Ah. I don't remember who he is, but fuck you, Barry. <laughs> of course I was. What would I have been? Chance, you snuck out of work last night, too. Uh, maybe the wallet? Maybe. I'm the case. The wallet. Okay. This wallet. You know about this, right? I've never seen it before. Liar! You hand delivered this wallet to Miss Delight just yesterday. Give me a break. You can't expect me to remember every little thing that happens. Well, I do expect you to remember something that happened just yesterday. What time was it when you found this wallet? I guess it was around one in the morning on the first floor of our company building. One o'clock in the morning? That's right. In other words, Larry, at the time of the murder, you were away from the security guard office. Ah! Yeah, but, but, but there's something that you didn't think about. What's that? My shift that day didn't start until 10 p.m. The murderer might have snuck in before then. Do I give him the... <laughs> and hello, YouTube chat. <laughs> We are we are battering Larry for being an evil little man, I guess. <laughs> an evil little man. What do you mean by that? If the murderer had snuck in before 10 p.m., then it wasn't my fault. It was the fault of the guy whose shift was before mine. Why well, do I have the feeling that he still doesn't get the seriousness of this? Listen up, Larry. We know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the killer snuck into the CEO's office after 10 p.m. during your shift. Because why? Because... Well, the... The keycard was used at one. Die. Larry, when you use this keycard, does it leave a record? Yeah, it does. But I can't just show the record to just anyone, you know. That keycard data was already made public in the trial today. What? I didn't know that! Any kind of request for info like that is supposed to go through me! Boy, does that sound a bit arrogant coming from a part-time guard. Anyway, according to the data, the door to the CEO's office was open with this card. Furthermore, it was most definitely used at 1 a.m., the time of the murder. No way! Yes, yeah, someone used this to get into the CEO's office. That happened at 1 a.m. on the night of the crime, right in the middle of your shift. Aww. Larry, you can't duck your responsibility this time. God, no! I find it hilarious that he handed him, he handed me, his, the thing that told the truth against him. I'm embarrassed for how I lost that case, but at least unlike the unspeakable story, I can't blame someone else for it. That does seem to happen a lot with Face Attorney, there's just little things that just batter your brain. Oh, I know it, it was all my fault! It's my fault that the boss was killed, my fault! Larry? There was nothing I could do. I have important issues to deal with too, man. What happened to that? What happened that night, anyways? Imagine not save scumming off the rip. <laughs> there, you can brute force it with that, but I like to use like I, I try to use my brain a bit more, even if it does waste a bit of time. Oh, my Donna happened, huh? Your Donna? I got a bad feeling about this. Yeah, my Donna called and said I have to talk to you right away. So I went to see her, and he was standing right there next to her! Um, who was? Her new boyfriend! It was like some horrible joke! Before I knew that I was going on, the guy socked me right in the kisser! Normally I'm the one that does the punching, isn't that right, Maya? Yeah... So, that was why you left the security guard office. <laughs> I'm sorry! <laughs> it's all my fault!
How can I ever make it up for it, Nick? What can I do? What? What? My saves come for every case, but I was proud that I could beat three a grade ace attorney cases without ever having to reload a save. Neat. But grade ace attorney uh, two five is purely a case of me forgetting something from an investigation. Always satisfying to solve a case without a guide. Yep. Did he, did, he's curled up on the floor crying like a baby. Oh, boy. Nick! Is there anything I can do? Anything! Just name it! I'll do whatever I have to do to make up for it. I swear I will! Larry? Hey, Nick, as long as he's offering, why don't you show him the evidence we've got? She's right. Maybe we'll get at least one bit of useful information from him. <laughs> Nick! Um, I think you know how much I want to help you guys, but I really don't know what to say about that. It's just that he seems so, I don't know, pleasant. Um, the buzzer in the CEO's office is directly connected to this room, right? That's right! Just like my heart is connected to yours, Maya! Huh? Go ahead, Maya. Press the buzzer in your heart. I promise I'll come running to your rescue like the professional guard I am! Wow, that was pretty good. <laughs> Thanks! I try. Do you think you could tell us about the buzzer now? Yes, please. Please tell us. Okay, I guess so. Prepare to be wowed. Um, I, I accidentally pressed the buzzer earlier. Yeah, I heard it. So that was you, huh? You're a security guard, aren't you? Why didn't you come to the CEO's office? Well, this is the third floor of the basement. The CEO's office is on the first floor. I thought it would be a good idea to um, adopt a wait-and-see approach. Plus, there's a police detective here, right? I just didn't think it was necessary. It's as if he's trying to win an award for the laziest person on the planet. Um, let's get back to talking about the night of the murder, okay? Is it true that the buzzer didn't go off that night? There must be a record, right? You must have had looked at it, right? Yeah, excuse me. Which is why my initial impressions of Farewell and my turnabout were soured. It's hilarious how one of the two cases I lost in Greatest Attorney was the tutorial, but it was darn hard! Man, why do the finales of Ace Attorney 1 and uh, Ace Attorney 2 have some form of goodbye in the name? Eh, probably because they just like, ah, it feels grand. Don't feel too bad about it. Difficulty in a game like this is subjective. Yep. Ace Attorney 1, you say goodbye to Maya. The second one caused the turnabout in Ace Attorney 2. Edward says farewell to Franziska, the one that caused the turnabout. That's my theory. I'd say that seems good. Do you think you could take just one more look for me, pretty please? <laughs> okay. I just can't say no to you, Maya. What do you think, Nick? He's probably right. I don't think even Larry could make a mistake like that. What, what was that? What's wrong? I made a mistake! Huh? But but how? It can't be! It's impossible! Okay, enough already. What about the records? That night, it went off just once in the morning at around 1 a.m. At 1 a.m.? That's when the murder happened! Really? Are you serious? That's terrible! It can't be! Jesus. <laughs> but I say goodbye to basically everyone I interact with at some point. There's the heartburn again. Fuck you, Larry. Yeah, that is kind of serious, Larry. And the final case in Ace Attorney Investigation 2 is called the Grand Turnabout, so yeah, they sound grand. You fool! Did I gumshoe about this right here? Nope. Hmm. Well, obviously, I guess maybe that'll be used for... Or maybe we need to... Maybe, uh... Present it to get more? You guys have really made me reflect on the way I've been living. But the only problem is, with all this reflecting, where's the time for love? Frankly, I think reflecting is a bit overrated, you know? What are you going on about, Larry? Plus, do you honestly have any new info on the buzzer record? Huh? The record? Ah, no. Nothing at all. This guy reflects about as much as a piece of black carpeting. Hmm. So I'm guessing that's going to be used during the diddly D. I face when you're playing a crappy old Flash game while listening to this and anyone suddenly scares you with a scream. <laughs> I bring out the... I gotta keep you on your toes. But... I 
think we might call it quits here. We've been going for about three hours, longer than I anticipated. And we've made decent progress. We got through the first trial, literally. And we've made decent progress on investigating. All that's left, I think, is the Cyclox for Andrews, which we will try to smitty smash next time. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody. This time, we did away with Luke at me relatively quickly, all things considered. Proved our boy wasn't a thief, but in the end, implicated him in murder. But yes, thank you very much for watching. If you want more from me, I have two YouTube channels. An edited content YouTube channel, Neon Icy Wings, which I actually have made progress towards making videos for. I voiced an... An hour and a half script for a video. Oh boy, that's gonna be a nightmare to edit. Nice stuff to make assets. <laughs> I really like this. Thank you very much for joining me on this. And of course, if you want uh, more from me for YouTube wise, I also have Neon Icy Games on YouTube that I stream to as well as upload all of these streams to for posterity as well as archival purposes. So if you want to check out my reactions to all the past Ace Attorney games, you can see them all there on the Neon Icy Games YouTube channel. If you prefer to watch me on uh, Twitch, dear YouTube viewers, you can also catch me live streaming on twitch.tv slash Neon Icy Wings. If you want other things from me, like my art, or even my writing, well, art like my little guy in the corner, you can see me post art to various sites like Tumblr, DeviantArt, Newgrounds, Pillowfort, Inkblot, all over the place, and links can be found in my link tree, linktr.ee slash neoniceywings. Also in my link tree is a link to my writing, so if you want to see the random rabbles of my archive of our own, you can find them there. And then if you want to throw a few dollary dues my way to help me survive the evils of the universe, I also have a Patreon linked in there as well. I've only heard of the two of those art sites. <laughs> the, 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 the world is evil and... I'm trying to survive as an artist is mean, especially because I am kind of an artist. I'm trying to make a name for myself. The, 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 the world is mean. Very mean. But yes, thank you very much for watching, everybody, and I hope to see you dudes next time! Bye-bye.